morning, Westeros! And welcome to our Morning Throners podcast. I'm Nelson. I'm Jeff. And I'm Kyle. And we're the fucking Morning Throners. And welcome back to another episode of your favorite song of Ice and Fire podcast. We are your Morning Throners, and we got Tyrion 3 on deck. What's up, gentlemen? Yo, yo! Tyrion again. He's... <sighs> He's he's got some good stuff going on, but I I, I mean I do miss the action. I'm gonna, I'll throw that out there. These are the chapters we live for, boys. These are the chapters yeah, we live for. I'm not gonna go that far. Long? How many how many pages was it in the uh, normal book? Because I read it on my iPad. It was 18 pages. 18 pages, all at one table. Uh, all yeah. Tyrion and Tywin just hashing it out. Nothing better than that. I do agree that it it was cool. It's a cool chapter. Like the politics of it all is a cool side to see. Like they're kind of playing the game that's not the physical game right now and this this isn't their fault i guess but i think my problem is that i hate the game right like mm-hmm. the way that he's like selling these his daughters selling off kids and, around. Like, <laughs> and like the, just the way everything is played like it just it sucks so much to me like yeah. and like it's this still happens right like there's definitely still oh, kind yeah. of back back alley stuff going on and it, it's just so fucked right like yeah. <laughs> this is like you just play with people's lives and i don't know like, don't arranged marriages have a better like success rate than unarranged marriages uh i don't know but again that. that might be that might be biased because like in places where there's arranged marriages you're of just course not you allowed stay together you're just not yeah. allowed yeah. Yeah, there's no yeah. other option <laughs> yeah you were forced to marry anyway yeah. <laughs> i think there is some stuff to that though like there's some, probably some weird well, science I, yeah, some of that stuff. Uh, yeah i don't know uh, I will say though, I think I think a part of the like part of the reason. So I guess the quick summary is it's just a council chamber. I kind of said it without saying it. It's all mm-hmm. just one big council chamber. I feel like this is kind of kind of finalizing the recap, right? We've we've had we're twenty chapters in, right? We've had a lot of yeah. at least every chap every character's had like one or two chapters now, and some of that has been like okay recap. I feel like this chapter yeah. is kind of like the culmination. They covered literally everything from the wall to Dorne, where everything's at currently right they cover it all in this one chapter yeah. well yeah and we learn a lot too right yeah and I, that's what that was kind of going to be my point there is that like i do feel like that's partly his writing style as well as like recap with new material from a different person yeah is is kind of how it, it these be, books seem to be pieced together to me at least like i said that's yeah it, i think it's interesting the way he does recap because like you're saying he'll do recap basically where you learn about something that we already know but he'll we'll learn about it from perspective of somebody who didn't know or we'll learn about information that we know is just wrong. Like we like people are learning that Bran's dead. Well, Bran's not dead. We know Bran's alive, right? So like stuff like yeah, that. or the three headed dragon that was born and stuff like yeah, yeah. That, that's from this chapter. We haven't seen my girl Danny in a while. Yeah. Speaking of her. Yeah. But the other thing I wanted to say is I think part of the reason why this is all just like kind of you're saying it's them just playing the game, and we don't get this too much. But like when you read chapters on the heels of each other, sometimes you're like, wow, this is really stupid, or like, why why do they care about this? And when we had the last chapter with Sam. Literally, we have an undead army coming to kill everybody. And now we got these guys playing these stupid games of like, oh, yeah, let's let Mance Raider take over the North. The juxtaposition like, of like the reality yeah. of like, hey, man, doom and death <laughs> is right here at your nah, door. And it. you guys are worried about exactly. Great joys will take care of that. If every single person in this room had been where Sam was, this yeah. conversation, they don't care about anything. They don't care about the Tyrells or Sansa. They don't care about nothing except for what the fuck do we do about these guys way up north? Yeah. So How I think George survive? puts these chapters next to each other on purpose. Like, hey, we got this actual really big problem. And not that these things aren't problems. But yeah, I don't know if many people are thinking about that. But I don't know. I think I think there's a little bit of when you're when that. you're rereading it like that's this, a good point. it's a pretty deep. That's a pretty deep connection. I don't know how many readers are just like, holy shit, Sam is literally fighting an undead army and they're talking about marrying 13 year olds, but it is a really good point. But all right, let's jump in. All right. Hang on one last, one last thing in terms of my thoughts in this chapter. And I think maybe part of the reason I don't love it as much as it sounds like you guys do is because it makes me feel stupid, right? Like there's definitely a lot of stuff happening here that I don't understand. Sure. Uh, Sure. I mean, there's so many names that like, it could just confuse you just from there. Well, it's not even that it's like, uh, like, you know, he's like, he, Tyrion knows something's up, and it's like, uh, what? And, you know, uh, just stuff like that. And like, well, yeah. Well, you're not yeah, but I guess real quick, I'll, kind of on the names, and we'll get into it in a second, but the first thing we'll go over is the people in the council. But three of these people we've heard of decent amounts of, but never really like seen them interact in any real capacity, right? And I'm talking about the, the basically the Reach mm-hmm. Lords. Re- Paxer Redwine, Mace Tyrell, and Mathis Rowan. We've seen maybe Mathis Rowan in a tent at Renly's camp, right? Maybe Paxter Red. I don't think I don't know. If, I don't think Paxter Redwine actually joined Renly because Cersei held his kids, so I don't think he ever actually chose a side. Mathis Rowan was on Renly's side, then switched before the Sanus battle. 
So again, we've heard and maybe seen some of these guys a little bit, but here we're actually kind of getting to see like what their motives are and what they care about. The first time we're really seeing them do anything, be involved in a conversation. So besides those three, who else we got in this council? Kind of the usual suspects. Littlefinger, Varys, Pycelle, the Septon, um, Cersei, Cersei, Tyrion. Yep, Tywin. Tywin. Daddy Tywin. And Cersei brought uh, plus one. Oh, I don't even know if I. Tyrion said, "I'm not not allowed. Pycelle's not allowed back on the council, <laughs> and here he is back on the council." Right. Uh, oh well, I said I said Pycelle. Oh, you did, you did sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. So isn't yeah. he? No. Isn't he back to being the grand? Yeah, we Maester, heard. Though? Yeah, so he had originally said that to, to Lancel, I think, basically like, yeah, you can have him out of the dungeons, but he's not allowed on the council. And I think in the last Varys, the last Tyrion chapter, where he's talking to Varys, basically, it was mostly a Shea chap, like Tyrion and Shay thing. Mm-hmm. But there was a little bit of Varys in there where he's basically like, oh yeah, the Conclave and the Citadel basically said that we're the only ones that can make or unmake a Grand Maester. Yeah. And they're like, well, I'm pretty sure we've killed a few before. Should I've done that? Yeah, he's like, I can, how about I unmake them with a sword? <laughs> yeah, exactly, he said something so. like that. Yeah. But yeah, he is back. So yeah, just getting yeah. that out. Yeah, so uh, Tywin walks in with most of the new players, which were the Reach Lords that Nelson just mentioned. Uh, it's a much funnier scene, I think, in the show because the, the the seating arrangements are a little bit different, Nelson. And again, this is I think this is where the show really starts getting different. And a lot of this stuff isn't super yeah. different. It's just the timelines are like things happen before or after. And, and just the amount of people. Like they're not hiring a, a Mathis Rowan character. <laughs> well, there's no Reach Lord. This scene, ba- the, There's a really funny scene where basically – it basically starts with Tywin sitting down at the at the small council the chamber. Yeah. Varys, Littlefinger, Pycelle, Tyrion, and Cersei are all standing there with like open chairs. And like really quick, Pycelle, Littlefinger, and Varys like try and get the closest seat to Tywin to be like buddy buddy. Cersei and Tyrion are chilling. Cersei brings her chair over to the other side so that she's the only person sitting on like Tywin's left side. And Tyrion just brings his to the head of the table. It kind of, it is like but, a, but it is drags a he drags it. It makes like, a bunch of noise. <laughs> It is like a kind of humorous way to show like the balance of power. Like everyone wants to try and be close to Tywin. Tyrion doesn't really care. He he kind of he just goes to the opposite head of the table. Marches to the tune of his own drum. Yeah, but uh, and it's pretty much like Cersei's next to him here. The the Lord, rest of the lords are kind of spread out, and then he's at the Tyrion's at the other end. Yeah. So, uh, but that's that's neat. I just thought it was funny. The, I I like, I like that show scene. It makes me giggle. Yeah. Not that it's too. important. He talks about the the new people, and they actually do give him some. I just made a note they give him some gratitude for his efforts in the Battle of the Blackwater, and you know maybe it's not as much as he should get, but you know they're they're throwing some praises. He's like, go tell the fucking singers, man. Like, yeah, <laughs> don't be telling. Write me. a fucking book about me. I <laughs> yeah, just saved like, your on. life. Get this out. Give me the word out. But uh, and then. Kevin says like, yeah, you did really great. Or Lancel. Okay, I think All I right, so this Kevin. Is, by the way, uh, so Lancel was like oh I, he told me how brave you were out there and then it's like oh how is he so now we know he's maybe kind of doing better but there's days where it's like oh my god i don't know die. man he sounds he sounds like he's not doing so great yeah, yeah the, best, day by day. the best description and it's kind of weird and it's later on is he would be healthy enough to marry someone to lay there and say the vows if you gave, gave him a piece of paper he could read off of it but he's not strong enough to fuck he couldn't consummate the marriage so he's somewhere in ability to read and ability to fuck in in terms of his health status it's so strange right so he took an arrow right or was stabbed in the shoulder. I don't know if we know exactly what happened. He got hurt like his in his arm shoulder, arm up. area. Yeah. yeah. And then Cersei like <laughs> punctured the wound with her finger kind of like. She gets mad and like basically says, go make make sure Joffrey comes. This is when in the Sansa chapter where she's in this thing during the yeah, battle. Yeah, no, I, I remember. Just, not for just for you, for okay. anyone listening. Lancel comes in and says like, hey, here's the status. And Joffrey's like. Or Cersei's like, get Joffrey back. And Lancel's like, no, that would be a horrible idea. That would break the troops outside. Exactly. Yeah, she, he needs to I be I think out she there. just like smashes him right in his wound and he falls over. Yeah. And Cersei dips and tells somebody else to go get right. Joffrey. And he's and like Sansa, dying on Sansa the ground Sansa there. Yeah. At, the po- at that time, I said like, oh, and Sansa goes to help him and, and basically says like, somebody get a maester or somebody take him to a maester really quickly. Yeah. And I think we had talked about it a little bit. Like, does she save his life there? And again, at that point, we didn't know how serious it was. Here we find out it's like decently serious. Yeah, it probably did then. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just. It just feels like a, like oh you had a shoulder injury like it doesn't seem very life threatening yeah. usually maybe if the the wound festers and like modern like, medicine it's I I get it but like <laughs> it's not like he was like out on the battlefield and not getting treated like he's getting treated pretty quickly yeah. after but yeah. um I, I I do understand that they don't have. They're like boiling wine. They're <laughs> yeah, putting wine yeah. in his cut and hoping that it helps it. But, <laughs> yeah, that's their that's their go-to. Uh, Milk so, the poppy and boiling wine in the cut. Tyrion just thinks to himself, "What would, what would 
Cersei think about Lancel's state right now? Like, does she want him dead? Does she care? Because she's visiting him. That's the is she gonna kill she's him? She's been yeah, praying yeah. by his bed, is what Kevin says. And Tyrion's like, yeah, but praying for him to live or die because she's probably got what she wants out of him, and now he's just a liability. He's just a walking yeah. liability, probably as far as Cersei's concerned, is what Tyrion's thinking. Yeah. So we get into the actual business of the council, and Cersei's like, should we start with the wedding? And Tywin's like, no, fuck that wedding. Let's talk war. Uh, (laughs) So we get a little bit of uh, some news about a a tactic that we heard was happening in a previous chapter. Yep, exactly. At Duskendale. Exactly, the the thing for Duskendale. So let me send you guys this picture. I don't know if I remember the discussion about this in the other chapter. I'm sure we talked about it. but I think the Northmen were sending people to Duskendale from Harrenhal, and they knew about it somehow, and they were going to trap them like the or meet them there type of thing nelson will nelson will give us the details yeah i have two short quotes from the, the previous chapters i don't actually know the quotes i have my notes so in aria 10 Roos gets word that helman tall heart helman tall heart had taken castle dairy two days ago and basically he commands him to kill everyone at castle dairy and meet up with robeck glover and start marching to duskendale um, and then in the first Tyrion chapter of this book we heard basically he's meeting with tywin again um, and basically we get an update that Rob is still in the West, but we hear that there's a large force of Northmen led by Helmut Tarhart and Robert Glover going to Duskendale. Tywin says he's going to send out Rand- Randall Tarley to meet them and Sir Gregor Clegane to go up the King's Road basically so that they can't retreat. And it's exactly what we hear here. Randall Tarley has won a battle. It wasn't super decisive. They both had pretty decent casualties, but we won for sure. And the Northmen are now retreating back to Heron Hall, and they're like, but the mountain should be in his way. So, exactly. Looks like everything according to plan. Mm-hmm. Did you say that Helmut Tallhart died? I did not. Uh, I guess that's like the one no, one notable name. Yeah, he's the, yeah, exactly. He's the lord that dies. With thousand dollars, yeah. So, the next news is Rob returning to River Run, and after, like, he just kind of left the, the crag and where they were looting in the west go for them to kind of heal and he's back to river on. Well, they, they think he's headed North, right? That's what they all believe. Yeah. That's right now. When they talk about that. Yeah. Right after. Like, okay. say, I, like, I just uh, didn't want to jump. Yeah. No, that that's um, my next. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's really what they talk about. They're like, look, he's got to go home. His <laughs> like, we need to, we need to move pretty much. It, this has given the West some time to recover. Like mm-hmm. you said, they're, they're regrouping and regathering forces, but it also kind of exposes him big time. Yeah, um, yeah. The big point they make is like, what is a kingdom? What is a king without a kingdom? Well, didn't didn't Cat say that? Somebody else said that. I think. Uh, I believe what is Cat a king did. Without his kingdom, I believe Cat was like, if you can't protect your own lands, yeah, I think you're no right. one's gonna follow you, type of thing. So, I mean, did you say? I, sorry, I was looking at the map. Did you guys say what the Lannisters were doing in the West? They're remaking a new army. You guys said that. Regrouping. Yeah, gotcha, yep. gotcha. Yep. Is it cousin? Is it a cousin? I think it's the yeah, son it's- of. Stefan Lannister, who was the last one, the last Lannister. That nobody knew who he was to begin with. Now it's his son. Again, probably a nephew. Yeah, a nephew of Tywin, I'm guessing. Um, And he's meeting up with Forley Prester, who I guess is sitting at the Golden Tooth. We know the Golden Tooth is like a pretty defensive position uh, on the River Road between River Run and Cashley Rock. And I'm pretty sure even when Rob went west, he just avoided this this group of people. And as soon as, I I just found the paragraph, as soon as Rob turns north, they're turning on River River Run. Run. Yep. Um, and then the next news is that Balon wrote to the king for an alliance. Um, and give then, me the north, and yeah. and we're buddies. Is call him, call him king, and give him the north. Everything north of the neck. Yeah. And a couple of the river or the reach people are <laughs> like, "Yeah, fuck it, do it. Who wants the <laughs> yeah, north yeah, anyway? Like, <laughs> yeah." Let them fucking let them have up there. It's ruined wasteland anyway. It's one of those things too, like where if Tywin doesn't say what Tywin says later, I'd probably think the same thing. Like, oh yeah, this does make sense. Like, it is kind of exactly what we want. Sure, let's help. Let, let's join up with this guy. Why pay him for what he's given us for free? Yeah, I mean Tywin's yeah. Tywin. Like, well, nothing's changing, right? It's not like it would be different if the Greyjoys were attacking King's Landing, maybe exactly. From, yeah, like they're. They're not even bothering them. Like, fuck that guy. Like, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, exactly. Like he's like he said, they're they're already up there helping him. And like, like at everything this point, he's doing is helping. And he says it later, like maybe something better will come. Uh, at this point, like, fuck them up there. Like, well, he does let, say, let him be a distraction for Rob is the the better strategy for them right now. Again, this himself. is I think the Balon thing is one of the things I circled back to later. So I'm not sure if it's now or later, but I think at one point Tywin does say, 
they do have all these ships out near the Sunset Sea, which is just the, the sea on the west. But that's where mm-hmm. Castle Rock and Lannisport is. He says, like, they're in position to fuck with us if we wanted to. So we don't want to make him mad. But we don't have yeah, to give him what them, he wants either. Like, at this point, like, the Lannisters aren't even there. Like, when was the last time, like... They got a new home. Like I get it, it's their family home, but like <laughs> well, somebody's they don't even have an heir right now. They don't even have an heir because Jamie can't be it, and he's not giving it to Tyrion. He's getting it. So, yeah, like, he's not giving it to Tyrion. So to Jeff's point, if Tywin died tomorrow, I guess it goes to Kevin. Jamie's getting it. Are you kidding? Well, I mean, the unless, there's the land like, unless there's like Jay, writing, they don't care. Are you like why do you why do you think all of a sudden this is the law? That I don't know who enforces it because like first off. I'm sure the king enforces it. Like, but. if Jamie... Yeah, exactly. Like, if Jamie really wanted it, then yeah, I, I bet you he could. But I, well, I guess we don't... He 100% would get this. Yeah, I, I guess I, I, I guess you're right. They could make it work. They could make that work. They he would, would make give it, work, it to, He sure. would give it to Tyrion to keep it in the family if it was if well, it was otherwise. He, it's Jamie's. Okay, that makes sense. My, my point is, it seems like Tywin wants to somehow make it so that if he dies, there's nothing for anyone else to do. It just automatically goes to Jamie. And my point is, I don't think that's quite where we're at right now. If right now, we if he died, Jamie would have there to be like, be hey, Cersei, hey, Joffrey, sign some papers. Some, you know what I mean? I don't yeah, think so. Okay. I think this okay. is all unspoken, man. Okay. I, think you, I think you're underestimating this family. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. That's fair. All right. Uh, so the next talks is that they, had, they still have a problem in the East with Lysa in the Vale. Real quick before that, Littlefinger at one point makes a joke saying, I should send Rob an angry letter because it seems Roose Bolt- Bolton has been stabling goats in my castle. Yeah, in his in his castle. <laughs> yeah. And again, I think this is a jab because Welcome they call back, Littlefinger. Because they call Vargo Hote the, the goat. goat. Yeah. Right. And I, I think Roos is still at They're not actually stabling. Well, I'm sure they have the, some goats, right? I think goats are like, like not in the dining right, hall though. or whatever. I think it's this probably a, in the stables. Exactly. Or, but I think this is a joke at Vargo. But again, yeah, that's well, because what I thought too. Roos told Arya, like, hey, when I leave, I'm leaving Vargo in charge. But I don't. Yeah. We haven't heard that he's left yet. But again, in that Arya chapter, he did seem like he was going to be leaving pretty soon, which is why Arya was, Arya was basically like, I got to get out before he gets out. <laughs> so, but but we haven't heard that he's left yet. So. I just, that just confused me because it makes me wonder, is Roos gone from Harrenhal and Vargo officially the one in charge? Because if so, it's the first we're hearing of it. It's kind of what it seems like, but it's in a really weird way <laughs> for that information to get snuck in and a joke by little, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. Who knows? So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So back on to what I was saying, they, the next business was uh, talk of Lysa still being kind of an issue in the East because she hasn't pledged fealty to Joffrey, but she hasn't been fighting either. She just kind of held up tight. So. They want to kind of figure out if they can get her on, get her on their side, uh, and they have a nice little plan for that. Didn't didn't they say she she was a traitor or something? But maybe. It- uh, well, Tyrion isn't happy with her. Yeah, well, obviously, but I think somebody else has said something like she's a traitor. But and then I think that it was because of um, John Aaron and that whole thing, right? Maybe uh, maybe because John was conspiring with yeah Stannis. and she was yeah and she was kind of party to that and that's why she went home but yeah i mean i always i forget she exists like she's more forgettable than yeah, and we don't get a chapter is, her like danny it's been so long too it's been what book one else book two maybe what since we've seen early Lisa? book two yeah well, well i don't think we've actually or even heard about her really well i mean she's mentioned in cat chapters like cat wants her Barely. to like write to yeah, hoster because hoster's dying and stuff like that but. well yeah it's usually just like just sister stuff not like well, my, hey we need your army stuff my thing is is like the only thing we really know about her is the same thing Tyrion knows from her again besides like the other info we've, we've learned about but like actually seeing her in person we've seen everything Tyrion's seen because it's either the cat chapter with her or the Tyrion chapter with her where Tyrion's pretty much there and it seems from what my, my take on Lysa is she wants nothing to do with this war. She just wants to oh, yeah, stay safe. Sure. The, does Tyrion not know that? Keep her boy safe. Keep her baby safe. Sure. But does Tyrion not know that? Because here they're like, what are we going to do with Lysa? I hope it would be nice if she just stayed out of the war, which like it seems like she's going to do. Well, if I can remember back, which it's been a while and I don't remember. So I'm kind of paraphrasing, but she's not a big fan of the Lannisters. So true. Like, doesn't she want to kill every Lannister? And that's what they that, that's part of what they say here is they're like, we want her to stay out, but she she was John Aaron's husband, and John Aaron and Stannis were sniffing around pretty yeah. much like anti Lannister before John Aaron died. And and she's sisters to Kat, who's the mom of the King of the North. So right. she's she's friends with the people that we're not friends with, and to your point, she she kinda doesn't like us. So I don't know if she like wants to stay safe or she's kinda like biding her time right now till she can get stronger, but 
Uh, she's definitely not in a hurry, I would say. Yeah. But I guess that's a that's a fair possibility that she could just be biding her time. I guess my I don't take it that way. I take it like she, all she cares about is safety. If I can just say the fuck out of it, I'll say the fuck out of it type thing. I think she's she's kind of Switzerland in it, right? Like she's I'm just, definitely Switzerland. Leave me alone. Right <laughs> yeah. If you if you if you come here though, you'll have some problems, right? Yeah. I think I think it's worse. Like she's we at. have no problem but, killing you at the bloody gates and you trying to climb this mountain. I but. also don't know though. Like if they if they do attack River Run, right? Like she might have to do something. Mm. I feel like they've Kat already, sent they've her already two been multiple letters, <laughs> and she's just like radio silence. Like, hey, help us! Hey, Hoster's dying! Hey, we're in a war. It'd be really cool if you came down. And she's just like radio silence. True. Yeah, her main priority is is little Robin for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, but like, she doesn't have to go like to the. War. That's like what's the goofiest yeah, part. But right? Yeah, but exactly. all the if the knights leave, that's most yeah. people protecting Robin. True. And well, so here, here's another thing, and this comes into play a lot of places here because, like, they, they talk about a thousand people die and stuff like that. Like, how many men does she have? Like, I don't know the size of these people's kingdoms. Is if she sends out a hundred knights, is that a lot? Does she have 50,000 knights? I'm, I mean, I'm, that's a huge exaggeration, but like, well, this is a chapter where we kind of get some numbers on that. So, in the Battle of Blackwater, Stannis lost 47 lesser lords and 616, 619 knights. So yes. like a, a thousand knights would be a lot of knights. Is that a bunch? But to me, that's a, it's an army. Like, it's basically what Stan. It's more than what Stannis lost in the Blackwater, and Stannis okay. lost a lot in the Blackwater, right? Because he had like two or three times what yeah what King's Landing had when he showed up. Okay, there. he just got fucked by the chain. So Six hundred knights is is a bunch. So like, if fifty knights for her, like, is that what you're saying then? Like the Dornists are sending three hundred people, not knights. How many people? How many knights do you think she has? Just because she hasn't been involved, like the Vale hasn't been involved in any fighting, if it was like, okay, call to arms, call the banners, I bet you they could get, produce 10,000? 10, 10 to 20,000, yeah. Knights? Yeah. Because uh, okay. they're they, okay. fighters. No, that's a great. No, no, that's. I, that I, was, I wouldn't say they're all knights, but fighting men. Yeah. My, Army. my guess on that is just because, like, Rob basically, with all the North and the phrase, he had about 18,000. That was like his max. All the Westerlings, when Tywin basically just got everybody from the West, that was about 20,000. But again, there's a lot of mountains in the Vale, so I okay. would think they're closer so, to well, the North than they are to the West, and just in terms of That's population. the other side of it, is like, I don't know the Vale, like, we're never in the Vale, mm -hmm. right? Like, I don't know the Vale. Yes. We've yeah. been to the yeah. Erie That's for a, a week, or whatever it was, yeah. and then that, that was it. Like, so I don't, I have no knowledge base for that, so yeah. that's kind of where I'm coming from. Anyway, but, okay. I don't remember exactly what we were talking about, but... Uh, all right, so, but Littlefinger has the key to Lysa Aaron, and it's hanging between his legs. Ew. It's his penis. Real quick, before um, they get there, Tyr uh, Tyrion says, like, I want them to sit give me men. I want to go take care of Lysa. Like, he thinks that he's mm -hmm. going to go, like, command or assault well, on the so Eerie for a second. He has, he has thought that since he's been there, right? Say that again. He was like, I could take this. Well, I don't, I don't, I still don't know what you're saying. Explain yourself more. I'm, I'm, I swear that there was a chapter where him, he was like, with the mountain men, I could, I could climb this, this veil, and we could take it with the right, so the right troops. Basically, the way he escapes the veil the first time is he knows they're the mountain men are going to come up to him, and he basically just accepts it, and he's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk my way out of this, and he talks his way out of it by promising them the veil, the veil, or the, yeah. So yeah, that's why I was wondering. I was wondering if that's what you were talking about. Um, that's the only time I think he mentioned not it. just that, though. I'm saying like, I think he said, like, I can ima just imagine Jamie's true, like climbing this mountain, fucking fucking lice up. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like he said stuff like that, like where he's like, this is not as bad as as people think it is. Like he he thought so. Well, How's OK, that? you've actually seen season one of the show. That might be there's a show only quote where they're walking up to the veil. Vale, they're walking up to the Eerie and Tyrion says, like, it's impregnable. And Bronn says, they give me 10 good yeah, men and some yeah. climbing spikes and I'll impregnate the bitch. But that's a show only thing. Okay, maybe. In, in the book, we get Kat climbing to the veil and she's just and talking about how it's a nightmare. It nightmare. And, in yeah. the, and then basically he's just there, right? The next Tyrion chapter, yeah. he's just there and he thinks about how well, he had to get basket at the end of the way. But we don't actually see him climb the, the, the veil at all. We don't get that yeah, yeah. from him. But yeah. So I just thought all it was right. funny that he's like, yeah, let's go, let's go do it. And, Ma and Mace is basically like, okay, okay, buddy, leave the fighting to the fighters. Okay. Yeah. Just like super yeah. condescending. You, to you've already got lucky enough. Like Tyrion just popped off in this battle. Yeah, but nobody knows that. They think he just set up a chain and then was dying in the in the river. He's got a missing nose. He had to have been out there at least. Yeah, yeah that's I mean, yeah, like I said, they thought he set up a chain and then he was dying in the river. <laughs> okay. Not to rehash the whole thing, but like Lancel, like, and Tyrion had enough time that his 
fucking gaping face wound recovered, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, and Lancel is still messed up. That's what I'm saying. Like, he had a shoulder injury, and he's yeah. he's like on his deathbed from a shoulder. That, injury. I did want to say that, and I weird. forgot about it. But yeah, like exactly. This guy's face grew back together, and his his shoulder is that bad that it's almost killing him. It must be really infected and like yeah. just in a bad spot. All right, so Littlefinger is going to go woo Lysa. Well, and he like knows he can do it. He's like, oh, I've been there, done that. She loves me. I so I feel like he changed this chapter, right? Like he was always grimy and a weirdo. Yeah, I mean it's it's kind of. But I like, think this one he like went over the edge with this whole like the key is in my legs and the what what you said earlier with the goats in my castle. Like, there's a part I don't know. I think he's always always kind of been like that. It's been a while though. I don't know. Like this is the first time he's like openly said, like, oh yeah, I bang her all the time. She loves me. Like I don't know. It's just weird. It's like locker room talk right now. Yeah, he he seemed to be really different here, but I don't know if we've gotten a council meeting with him. We have before, but basically the last time the last time we've really seen him was in a council chamber where he basically decides I'm gonna go get a get the Tyrells. Uh, I think it's right after Renly dies, and he's like I'm gonna go get the Tyrells on our side, and he does. But I'm sure I'm sure in that council chamber he's saying some. I think this is pretty on par for for Littlefinger. I don't remember it being this bad. I don't know about it being on like, like literally like, oh, I can save, I can save us the East. My dick's the answer. Like that's super. <laughs> I could go look for cocky. one, but, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's super important. But to that point, there's a, there's a, there's a time in, in this chapter where Tyrion thinks like, this isn't a real council meeting. And, and I think that kind of what you're saying here is a part of it. This is literally the whole thing scripted. Tywin, well, right. Littlefinger, varies kevin seem to have a script here <laughs> yeah kevin's just like ty was just sitting there right and he told kevin like all right bring up this problem bring up my solution so <laughs> yeah. that like they can all agree with it and then i'll be like okay that's a smart decision <laughs> exactly. like this is just a dog and pony show for the the reach lords like, yeah. this is them this is them ma- making exactly, them feel yeah. important all these decisions have been decided so that's a good yeah. point that that is why uh Littlefinger is is even act more extra yeah, than he normally exactly. is. Is like he was in on the joke. Yeah, he yeah exactly. And so he he already knows what's going to happen. So he's he's hamming it up and he's over the top. He's definitely hamming yeah, exactly. it up. He knows Tywin's going to agree with what he says, so he can say it in a raunchy gotcha. way and still get the agreement. Okay, <laughs> okay. Thing. Then that's a fair reason that he flipped the switch here, and I didn't I didn't put that together. But you're I don't think it's a complete flip though. I think he's a little bit crude uh, a lot of the time. But it does, again, neither here nor there. I think it's pretty annoying. Like Mace Tyrell is just annoying this whole chapter. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but like constantly he's just like, that's what I would do. Or like either throwing out his opinion or just agreeing with somebody like, shut the fuck up, dude. Like, yo, there's a guy at work like that, that he, he will, (laughs) he'll come with an answer and you'll say, no, you got to do it the other way. And then the next thing he does is, oh yeah, that's how I would do it. Oh, right. Get the fuck out of here, man. It drives me nuts. (laughs) Same thing. Same thing. Right. (laughs) Doesn't in the show, they make him really ditzy, and I feel like he's not necessarily ditzy here, like dumb. He's just a super brown mm. noser, and he just like wants to be kind of a voice. He wants to be one of the boys, man. Yeah, his mom called him pretty dumb. What? Did, what was his mom calling him? Like a loaf or Lord a hedgehog or something like that? Yeah, Lord like Puffish. he's an idiot. Lord Puffish. Like, I don't know. I feel like they they portrayed him pretty well in the show, but whatever. He's just a total idiot. I don't think he's actually dumb here. Like. His house is making moves. Your house doesn't make moves if you're a completely incompetent lord. I don't know. He's I get that Elena moves. is definitely pulling a lot of strings, but you have to have He's some competence here. I don't think there's don't as know. much stuff going down south. He wasn't really like, doing I feel the like whole the north. Lot. He's just sending his armies to whatever king he thinks is going to win at that time. That's a good point. They, they yeah. talk about at one point that like his his history, right? Tyrion thinks like yeah. He's he won didn't a, actually do it. He's anything. won a battle, but it wasn't really him. He showed up after Randall Tarley beat Robert. It was the only time Robert lost and And it was rebellion. like a questionable, like it was like a not a, a decisive victory by any means, right? Well the well, I think that's the other one, which was the Siege of Storm's End. Basically, he was the one that see he was the one on the outside when Stannis oh, was yeah. starving inside. But even that, like, he didn't win. He basically just did it really, really lo- for a long time, and then Ned showed up and was like, Hey, the war's over, you lost. And he was like, Okay. Sorry, right, I'm on your sorry. side now. <laughs> so, like, that was it. Yeah. So, I don't know. He's not making moves. I, I well, would. Well, didn't he get High Garden through some weird way, too? No, his family uh, his did. Family that was 300 did, years not... ago. Yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. That was 300 years but ago. But I meant, like, the whole thing, right? Like, their whole family has never done anything. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, and, like I said, I think down south, to me, as a first reader, like, it doesn't seem like there's nearly as much happening, right? Like, it's these guys don't hate each other nearly as much. They're all just kind of like amassing their own doing their own thing and and i feel like, like they're in such a 
great part. Like they have so many resources, right? The reach has all this food. They've got all this people. He's in a, yeah. like, it's like, I don't know, growing good times up for in everybody. Like Los Angeles and your parents like were gifted a really good job. And you have <laughs> yeah. And then line. now here they are, you know, in a war council, like they don't, they don't know what they're doing. The reaches for all the trust fund babies. Yeah. yeah. Silver spoon. And here they are in real life, right? The, this is like, Hey man, we have the nuke button here. Right? I, they definitely have it easier than the, the the South, but I will say I disagree with what you're saying that there's not as much going on down there. I would say that so far we're, we haven't been as involved in what's going on down there. And that's what I'm saying. As a first time reader, that's gotcha. my impression. Of. I'm saying that's slowly changing. I mean, we haven't heard about the reach being the reach wasn't being burned. You know, well, to and, Kyle's point, how many maps have I shown on this podcast and how many of them have been below King's Landing? Maybe one Zero. or two. Maybe if we're looking at yeah, storm, it's like one or two. And we end. talked about Renly exactly. marching and stuff. Yeah. So like, but but now we're there's like the map that I'll be showing later on. We got Dorn stuff. It, basically, all the Reach people we're talking about are down there now. So we're starting to get to the bottom of Westeros. It's still even though that though didn't it's it, it just didn't seem like much compared to what we have up top here. We got fucking Ice Men and we got everybody is king. Yeah, agreed. There's still more, still more for sure. <laughs> so so the big news coming is that with peter leaving for however long it takes to woo lysa is he's not going to be able to be master of coin he's leaving a vacancy yeah yep so guy i know the perfect guy yeah he likes to spend money he's always been good at yeah. having it he's pissed though right Tyrion is immediately pissed once <laughs> he realized that it's him it's it's a pretty shitty job like it's like oh rebuild our economy we're in a trillion dollars of debt like it'd be like i don't know an economist taking over the, the US. When well, they get right into now, it like later, <laughs> like Littlefinger is like so good at just making money appear that like there's no way this money actually exists, right? Like, and that's even what Tyrion says. He's like, We're we're Lannisters, we dig our money out of the ground. Like, I don't know anything yeah. about how to like he he was obviously he's creating manufacturing money, money when we needed money. It's weird because like if you look at it like on paper, in simple terms, Tyrion has a huge come up in this chapter. Right, he's bitching about not being rewarded for anything. Bang, he goes from literally nothing. Right, he's not the hand of the king anymore. He's just the son of the hand of the king. Is I guess the closest title you could give to him. Which we skipped it, but like he's really focused on this necklace still. The very beginning yeah, of the chapter, Tywin's he's like that that hands, gold hand so necklace so is really shining. Tywin's on all his, dripped up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but so Tyrion salty, goes from, still salty. from nothing to master of coin, and again he goes from like relationship wise nothing to Sansa, who again. There's some questions on like, is that like, a, like, do you want to marry a 13 year old? Probably not. Uh, but that does come with some come ups, right? It comes with a very big castle, uh, potentially. Again, it's not a free uh, castle. Smash castle. There's things you got to do to get that. It's smashed. You to get it. Still better than an unsmashed castle. I'll take a smashed one. fell over an unsmashed one. fell any day of the week. Well, would you? For sure. Over what? Over nothing? Yeah. <laughs> I don't I'm, see. I mean, I don't know what Winterfell looks like right now. And I, to me, mentally, it looks like like flat, pretty much just like rocks everywhere. Well, it's, I'm assuming most of it is stone, right? Your stables are anything made of wood. Yeah, is but gone. like, like a lot of it was collapsing. I guess you're right. I yeah, yeah, it's probably not a great spot, but anyway, better than nothing. You're right. It came with. It comes with another title, which is what I mean. We see what that gets. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Littlefinger, right? Like, yeah, he might be getting a nice marriage. My point there was though is even this thing, which seems like a good look, like it's a promotion. Tyrion got a good job. He's like, oh, what it's uh, he's like, what's going on with this? Like, Tyrion doesn't like it. You know what I mean? Like, this seems like a good thing. And he's like, what's going on here? Suspe he's like super suspicious. I mean, if you really want to get into it, like some of this comes down to just like his family dynamic, right? Like he doesn't trust his dad. Like we see that the whole time. He knows his dad is is smart and pulls a lot of strings. And he knows that he's better than him. And he's like, he he's wondering what his dad, ha how his dad outplayed him. But the first question Tyrion asks when all the lords leave and like Littlefinger and Barry's leave is he's like, whose idea was it to make me master of coin? And Tywin says, that was Littlefinger's idea. So this one, yeah. like, I agree with you that he's always like, at our, like, okay, keep like whatever my family's doing, be suspicious. I think it's, I think that extends to Littlefinger too, though. Maybe even more so. For sure. He's, he's definitely <laughs> sussed out about Littlefinger. Right. I have two points. For now. sure. I yeah, go ahead, Jeff. Now. Uh, Tyrion, before being Hand of the King, probably never actually had a job or work. Like, he was just running around reading, drinking, whoring. So, <laughs> sure. And then the other thing is, like, Littlefinger needed this job to climb. T Tywin, or Tyrion doesn't give a fuck about climbing. Like, this was a way. Without this, Tyrion's Littlefinger's not high in the council chamber, and he's not doing shit to end up getting Harrenhal. And 
So you're saying he, you're saying yeah, a lot this, of people like this job isn't getting him closer to hand, yeah. and he wants to be hand again, right? Like he wanted power. If he's Secretary of Treasury, like, he enjoyed the yes, job of hand. Which, he's not in, going to enjoy the job of trying to pay debts off a broke ass treasury, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Where Littlefinger managed to do like weird shit. Which he even still was doing, right? Like he schemed to get Harrenhal. I think we might have skipped it again. Um, it might come back up later as well. But Littlefinger, he's using that title now to to enable him to make this this come up to marry Lysa exactly. and get the East. Like, like yeah. I mean, he's he's doing something all the time. Yeah, that's what I was gonna kind of close that point on. Like little Tyrion being untrustful of Littlefinger was in the last Tyrion chapter with Ty- again, maybe not the last one, but the one where he was talking to Tywin. He's like. Why did you give Littlefinger Harrenhal? That's a huge castle, and, and Tywin's like, "Oh, it's an empty title." And Tyrion even like rethinks yeah. about that here, and he's like, "Empty title? Look what he just did with that empty title." Mm-hmm. Now he's like, yeah, he doesn't ever have to even set foot in Harrenhal. I don't. He hasn't even seen it yet. I don't even know if he's seen it yet. Yeah, exactly, Jeff. He hasn't been. And he'll become on paper the Lord of Harrenhal and the Lord of the Vale. Yeah. All right. Uh, so they switch back to the Greyjoy alliance really quick, and Tywin's basically. We have already said it. Like Tywin's like. Fuck that. Like they're in the north. They've they're being uh you know uh, a problem for Rob. Let them stay up there. You know, they're they're doing us a favor, they're not hurting us right now. Like something better might come. Uh, and then they change to the wedding feast. Uh, the one thing that we skipped over is um if Littlefinger gets the deal done, right? So so Littlefinger's plan is he's gonna leave on leave tomorrow. There's a boat. <laughs> It's funny. He says there's a boat waiting outside the chain. So I guess this chain is still up, right? Because they don't too have a hard, fleet. Too hard to get back down. Well, I don't think so. I think it's because they don't have a fleet. They literally let all their so own it's just ships. just keeping everybody out. This is like their yeah. main defense is just keep the ships yeah. up. Like they'll have yeah. to at least dis- like get off earlier before. You know that's what a I mean? Good, yeah. I mean, and that's that's actually kind of how I thought they'd use it originally. Yeah, so. exactly. And they, can they even like there's some – isn't there like kind of a mountainside there? Like where yeah, exactly. are they even getting off? It'd be to, tough. Yeah. Yeah. So – why would they not always have a chain? Like, if this chain's that good, like, you should be able to open and close your bay. <laughs> I mean, growing up, we had a chain for our driveway, right? Like, exactly. Like, why same not thing. have a fucking chain for your driveway? <laughs> exactly. Same thing. Uh, you know, I like the boat names. The boat Littlefinger's riding on is called the Merlin King. The Merlin King. King. Yeah. For some reason, that sounded familiar. Me too. I, lo- I looked it up. It wasn't... It wasn't her before. I thought maybe I remembered it, but I must just remembered it. I like thought a, so a too, reread. Nelson. I was like, oh, was this one of the ones? Blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, okay. No, yeah. I looked... All right, so wedding, huge feast. I, I, I've got really quick bullet points, Nelson, if you want to unpack all of the – because Mace gets really upset because the Dornsmen are coming, and I don't really have the history written down. Um, but there's a big feast, uh, like thousands of people, right? They're, yep. they're in the inner <laughs> castle, in the outer castle, in the outer yard. They're fucking covering, like, just open air with silk. Like, there's going to be tents everywhere, yeah. essentially. Like, yeah. It's going to be crazy. This will be crazy, nice. For sure. And Massive. there's 300 Dornishmen coming up whatever way that passes through the reach. And then we get, like, Mace obviously doesn't like the Dornishmen for a lot of different reasons. They've been fighting for a long time. Oberyn, Martell, the Red Viper, damaged his son, crippled his, his oldest son. And we heard this from the last Sansa chapter, too. That's how Willis got crippled, was in a tournament against one of the Martells, which is part of the reason why the Tyrells and Martells That's don't right. like each other. There's just yeah. long history of them not liking each other because of their border border wars. Yep. But that is the fresh, fresh issue. The freshest issue of yeah. them all. <laughs> Before that, well, I want to go back real quick. Before that, when they're kind of finishing up on the, law, on the Balon thing, Tywin says, yeah, why pay him for what we're doing for free? Best thing to do is nothing. In enough, in enough time, a better option may well present itself. And Tyrion's like, what's he thinking? Like, there's something he's not telling people. Well, and it's just Tyrion's going to get the north, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what it seems like based on the conversation later. Or they they do talk about the wildlings later. It might also just be like, yeah, let it all let it burn up. <laughs> just let it all yeah, burn yeah, up there. Yeah. Like Mance coming. Well, yeah, fuck he's got up. Well, he does say that. Yeah, he's like exactly. He's like he might have some other problems here when the wildlings breach. And but he doesn't understand the the whites are coming to. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so but yeah, jumping back into that. The the Dornishmen, 300 Dornishmen. That seems like a lot of people. Like if we're again, we're talking about numbers, that's like a small army. It's like a city watch. Like they're sending like what twenty five, maybe twenty five to forty people with Cleos Frey back and forth from River Run, and that's mm-hmm. in the middle of a war time, right? So yeah, yeah. this that's isn't like a people pro- to protect themselves. <laughs> yeah, this isn't like a protection escort. This is like a. Uh, it's big, but again, they're coming. He's coming to stay, right? Again, like it's kind of like Ned coming to King's Landing for the. Well, he's getting he's a place at the council, that. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And Ned came with like what I think fifty people, 
and we saw how that worked out for Ned. So maybe it makes I sense like to bring not true, though, a little more than 50. Ned was just Ned was just throwing people left and right. right like, he okay, might have had you can have twenty five of my house guard, and you can have twenty five of our <laughs> men at arms, and you, hey, you can have twenty five. You can have scrub 25. the toilets. Like, yeah. He had to have two hundred. <laughs> yeah, he was just people, like sending people you know? to do right, dumb shit. Right. I think he ended up with these about- guys. Fifty guys are going to be shrimp fishermen now. Like he might what have had doing, fifty man? household guardmen and then like a hundred Northmen or two hundred Northmen. Well, I think like that fifty had... number is is from all my calculations of basically after he hands out all his men how much he had at the very end, like when the shit went down. That, I think that's how many were in his command at that point. Um, but yeah, so so they they just talk a little bit. Like Mace was like, okay, they can come type of thing. I, the, I don't know what the conversation was exactly. I didn't write it down. But the biggest part about it is that the there's two weddings, obviously Joffrey and Marjorie. And then Marcella and what's his name? Tristan is going to link these three families, Lannister, Martells, and Tyrells. Exactly. Because so. Mace is not happy. Basically, as soon as Mace hears that there's Dornishmen coming, he's like, oh, they better not be coming over my lands, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, oh. Very quickly, he's like, okay, they can come over my land. It's going to be everybody's land, essentially. Well, yeah, that's kind of what they're going for. But again, Tyrion thinks to himself about a little map knowledge here. He says that the Dornishmen are coming from Sunspear, which is over here on the map, bottom right. So they're coming this way. He says they're going to come up the Bone Way, which is this passage right here. And basically all this red is Dorn. Anything that's red, you can pretty much think of as Dorn. High Garden, so this is the Tyrells. Mace thinks he's going to like come this way, I guess, or like maybe up through here. But Tyrion says he's going to go to the Bone Way all the way to Summerhall. That, and now you're in Stormlands. Then go east to the King's Road and up this way. So basically what Tyrion says is like, it doesn't even make sense. Like he doesn't have to. Like it doesn't yeah, make sense to go out that? of your way. Like he has to go out yeah, of. Yeah, he's way. not going through your fucking lands, man. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well, that's kind of I think to the point of like just how I'm not gonna. I don't want to say dumb, but like maybe out of touch Tyrells are right, and like that's kind of gives credence to what uh, Olen Olen Olena Puffish Olena. Yeah, he's like he's proud, overly proud, seemingly. All right, so I don't really have much else. Well, on. I, I'll, I'll just t- I'll just touch on one more thing while we have this up the map real quick is the people that we're talking about here, right? Arbor is the red wine, so this is where Paxter red, red wines from. They make the good wine, good the wine, Arbor gold, and they have a good fleet. They're waiting for the Paxter red wine fleet to come around before they can attack Dragonstone. Um, the old town is the High Towers. They mentioned them a few times as like some of the lesser lords who got like little tracts of land. High Garden is where Tyrell's from, and Golden Grove up here is where Rowan is from. So these are the three big big ones who are in here. Horn Thanks Hill is where Tarly is. So this is Sam's house, right? This is Randall Tarly, who's been okay. kicking ass over at Duskendale. He also gets gifted a bunch of Yeah, stuff. I mean, this kind of it kind of plays into that, like where you were talking about Sam, the Sam chapter just before, but like to hear about his dad being like his dad actually is pretty cool right like <laughs> he seems warrior. like he's doing all right he's a badass he's a co- battle commander yeah. yeah for sure yeah so i mean i guess it makes i, I don't want to say it makes sense because I, I i don't like the way sam was treated obviously but like, oh i don't like you. this is why he's such a hard ass right like it's like if jeff would have been bad at baseball like uh, it would have been bad in the household he would have been disowned but that's a baseball coach like you're if you're not catching a ground ball you're out there getting ground balls hit at you it's until like late, the, until the streetlights are go, going on, you know what I mean. It's like the memes of like the little league, <laughs> like the little league dad. Like, yeah. it's it's been I've been there. And, and there are some. It makes league. you stronger. You either you either become better or you become. <laughs> I don't think that's good for you, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> it wasn't I think there's to a point. There, I've seen some dads take it like yeah. way too far. To a point, yeah, I think yeah. it's it can be good for you. Yeah, it's it's not. It wasn't that bad. I'm just <laughs> I'm just playing it up. Yeah. Yeah. So the other thing that I wanted to mention while we're here is Brightwater Keep. So this is something that they start handing out later. I think this gets given to Mace. This is one of the things that Mace really wants. This is the Florent lands, castle and lands. And Florent is Stannis' wife. So the Florents originally joined with Renly. And then when they had the choice, they joined with Stannis. So Mace is pissed because he's like, these are my guys. Why are they with Renly and Stannis? Like, they should have, like, yeah. pretty yeah, much. Yeah, I mean, pa- to be... Pretty much when Renly died and all the lords had to choose where they're going to go, Stannis or King's Landing, or... well, Stannis or King's Landing, pretty much the split was everyone from the Reach followed Mace and everyone from the Stormlands just fought in with Stannis. And the exception there is the Florence. And that's you be- said Mace? Mace Tyrell, yeah. 
So he basically all the Reach Lords were just like, we're going to do whatever our, our leech our, says. OK, I got you. I got you. They followed whatever his decision. Exactly. Was. Except I, for the Florence, which is why they kind of point this out later. And they're like, we want his land. We want yeah, the Florence. It's the next lands. part. Yeah. So. Yep. Isn't there a Florent still running like Stannis? Like is exactly. the last time we saw Davos was the Florent was the hand. Stannis is going crazy. He doesn't talk to anybody. Florent is running shit. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So the next part of of the council talk is the spoils of victory. And I don't know. They don't really talk about it. We you just hit on what Mace wants. The other people get a lot. The the wine guy wants a a lift of the wine tax. He just wants no taxes. Yeah, 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 that's like a sweet deal. He's like, fuck all that stuff. Well, I mean, and after seeing the map there, especially he's on his own little island in the Southwest. Like he, he like, why does he like, where's he going to want land? He's <laughs> yeah, like, my, yeah. that's like, just I got everything I need here. Yeah. yeah you're going to make me have to like have people over there. Like get out of here. So like, so it makes sense that he, he's, he, he doesn't want anything. All right. So uh, other than the taxes, uh, everybody from Stannis's camp got disinherited from their lands. So Nelson, yeah, uh, just I think it's funny when they're leading into the, the spoils. Basically, somebody says like, "Oh, now it's time to dish out the fruits." And Tyrion thinks to himself, "Like, uh, yeah, they they want lands and they they want wardships of like." There's a bunch of like kids who don't have dads now because of mm-hmm. the war. They want they want to take these kids on as wards. And I just thought it was a funny quote. Tyrion says, "Fortunately, these fruits were pen- plentiful, and there were orphans and castles for all." <laughs> Basically, it's like there was <laughs> yeah, a lot of orphans, a lot of good castles to give out. <laughs> so, a little kids so I around. think think this is for you guys here. I, that that helps kind of build into you. You've told me about the wardship and whatnot, and like I think this kind of helps. This is me starting to learn about it on my own, I guess is what I'm saying. So, yeah, I think it's also kind of just, again, George is like anti-war. And I think that's him slipping in. Like, it's not all just like everyone just gets free castles. It's also like yeah. there's a bunch of orphans. Yeah. People oh, there's died. a bunch yeah. of fatherless <laughs> yeah. children out yeah, here. Just oh, yeah, everything's broken. Yeah. yeah, like this isn't the nothing's the same at the end. Yeah. yeah. So the Tyrells want that castle that we were talking about for the Florence and they want to give it to Garland. Second son, Loras Kingsguard. He can't take shit. The badass fighter. Willis is getting high guarded. So exactly, Garland, badass fighter. And then again, I said some of them: Randall, Tarly, uh, Lady Oakheart, and Lord Hightower. They got they got shit too. We don't. They didn't really mention. Where's Oakheart at? Did you just show us that? Oakheart. I didn't show it. Yeah, you don't have to pull back up. But like, which castle? Oakheart Castle. Blackhaven is. Let me see. It's not Blackhaven. Did I stump Nelson? Stump Nelson, guys. Old Oak. Should have known that. I should have been able to look at the map and guess that one. <laughs> o- old Oak. It's on the map. Oh, yeah, it is on the map. It is on the map. Oh, no. Oh, no. We're all learning today. It's right up here on the Ocean Road. It's good to know, too, because there. this isn't the only Oak cart we know. There's an Oak cart in the Kingsguard. He is the Kingsguard down with Marcella right now. Not that it's super important, but now we know where he's Yeah, from. what's his name? Aries O'Cart. Aries O'Cart. Okay. So, okay. So basically, they diff- dish out everybody that, and they're done settling everything. And Paxer's like, once he's happy that he got his wine tax t- taken care of, he's like, you know what? Let's have some wine to toast Joffrey in our awesome hand. Just like, they, again, just sucking off Tywin, forgive it, and fuck the yeah, free tax, no man. taxes. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And Cersei's like, Joff needs swords, not toasts. Knock it off. Which is so weird coming from her, right? Like, that seems like right up her alley. Like, let's fucking party. It seems like they're just talking about shit she doesn't care about and she just wants to yeah, get to the wedding. Yeah, she wants to talk about the wedding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they, when they get to it, they only talk about it for like very, very short amount of time. My son's getting married. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they don't give a fuck other than the Dornishman coming. So the the High Septon got his crown stolen for Chris. Well, we knew about that, right? Yeah, that happened in the riot <laughs> when the first High Septon died. This is High Septon 2. Again, we don't know either one's name, but we're on the High Septon 2. The other one had his his guts eaten by the the poor. Exactly, yeah. The poor <laughs> probably ate him, ripped his arm off. Ugh. So yeah, this high septon's like there, but he he's kind of just been like throughout the chapter. He's been like, oh heaven save, <laughs> like God save you, like randomly, like the oh gods will little save finger, us. the gods will help little finger bring the veil into. The- <laughs> yeah, he doesn't really bring much <laughs> yeah, to the table useless. other than he just says shit. Yeah, every now you and see then. why he wasn't in the show. They, clearly, that's an easy character to cut if you're the writers there. So. What else? What do they do after? Basically, he says the high seven just says like, "Oh yeah, the the thieves who stole the last crown and like sold all the pieces. The father will judge them." And Tywin's like, "Yeah, fuck, whatever, sure, whatever you say. <laughs> you need a new crown, all the same. We'll crown you at the wedding." Um, 
he's like, Cersei, you take care of it. Go get some gold or do your thing. You're the jewelry girl. <laughs> so then he's like, Varys, get get onto the important shit. And Varys pulls out some more shit that he just does not care about. There's a Kraken off the fingers. Which so like the very started this by saying like, oh, I got some great news, right? Like yeah. and then they like kind of cut him off, went into that other stuff. And now here we are finally getting varies. I'm a little scared for varies after this chapter. Like if you're Tywin or Cersei, like you're probably not happy with like Cersei, like in, in Tyrion, because later on they hear that the, the Sansa plot, the news of that got brought to the council, but from Littlefinger and Tyrion's like, wait, Littlefinger told you that? Not varies. So here varies is bringing a bunch of news that Tywin thinks is BS. And then Littlefinger bring in actually important news. And then we're like, wait, why isn't the Master of Whisters the one bringing us the <laughs> import? Like, this is flip flopped. So, um, but yeah, this is the fingers. So, also important just because this is where Little Fingers from. He's from the, probably the little one of these little fingers. Huh, get it? And the crack. This is where the Kraken was. So the Kraken was off the coast of the fingers and ate and ate a boat. So brought a whole boat down. The thing is, I buy it because the other thing that he says here that doesn't sound believable we know is like kind of somewhat borderline true it's not a three-headed dragon but danny's over there in Karth with three dragons well, that's three dragons. We were talking about yeah earlier and, like, and this isn't... i mean if you think about the sigil it's a three-headed dragon right so uh you can kind of say like she's been reborn as uh, fair, you know fair point, that's a good point. The, the sigil was born her house was born her fire was born yeah like even if even if she didn't have the actual dragons it's the first like targaryen sighting there's a three-headed dragon there's danny's over there yeah i like that it's a good point and varies does say weird shit like or shit in weird ways yeah like metaphorically yeah Yeah. like the the dire wolf has leapt from the top window (laughs) (laughs) so the other piece of news that varies gives besides those two things is actual like seemingly true news he says there's fighting in the sepstones which is down here and he says there's a, uh, a probably a war about to break out between Tyrosh and Lice. And he says they both want Mir, which is right off the, the, the map to the right. I can't go any further. That's also happening. So there's some shit kicking off down here, Barry says. None of that is really in the south as we know it, right? Like, that's not the same as the war that's happening up north. That's super south, yeah. Yeah, but there are some news close to home. Our boy Tyrek was never found. I forget who Tyrek is. All right, now, where was he? Who was he? He was a Lannister. He was in charge of the city watch. No, he was. I think he was only like twelve. He was the one who got married to a girl who was like a baby, right? Just there was like some okay. girl who she was the like nurse. a lesser. Exactly, they called him the wet like, nurse. They called him wet nurse because his wife was like an infant. He got captured in the ride at King's Landing. Same time that the, the high septon got killed, uh, he just went missing, and basically they haven't been able to find him. That's crazy too. Like I've, I thought he got captured out in the middle of nowhere, but to be captured in the city and nobody can find well, him. Well, I'm pretty sure he like, was. That is bad news. Like, for him, and the right? Tyrion, Tyrion was looking for him. Tyrion had like Bronn looking for him. And Varys, yeah. like telling. No, him. I remember now that you said that. I forgot all about this. Though. They weren't <laughs> gonna stop till they found his body. Like even if he was dead, they were gonna find his body. I think they right? assumed he was dead, and like I think that's where Tyrion left it. Like I think Tyrion kind of stopped looking because he's like, yeah, that guy's just dead and gone, gone, and a million pieces. Or it's crazy, like you, though. yeah. So, yeah, so crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But then there were deserters, right? The people that put down, like, stopped fighting for a little bit. Yes. Yeah. And it's like, all right, what are we going to do with them? Yep. Cersei's like, they endangered Joffrey. I want him dead. Uh, Varys is like, we've had some troubling news from Weird the wall. Weird shit coming from the north. Yeah. yeah they, might, they might be better served to be Night's Watchmen. Yeah. Like, like, you'll still get kind of the same experience. They'll be gone from your life forever. But, yeah, yeah. Like, they, they might they might. They're good as dead to you. Yeah. <laughs> and then again, here, Varys kind of gets mocked a little bit. He Mace is, like, laughing at him. Like, wildlings, dragons, huh. krakens. Like, okay, sure. Everything's stirring nowadays. And Tywin's basically <laughs> just ignoring everybody. Because, he again, he made all the decisions before the meeting even started. So, he just gives them the answer now. We're He's gonna like, we're going to break their, their legs. We're going we're gonna to do knees. some old mob well, yeah, tactics but- and just break their knees cap so they can't do anything. I think some of this is what pisses Tyrion off so much, right? Like, it's like the decorum of the whole thing. And, like, Tywin's already got this all planned out. And, like... I mean, I think Tyrion kind of misses the way things used to be, right? He's he's definitely like longing for the past. What do you mean when he when it was like an like, actual this should be when meeting. he was pulling the strings? This should be my meeting. I should be pulling the strings. Exactly. Yeah. Like this, and like here he is. I was to so watch much better than Tywin, this. and he's already. I don't know if he yeah, believes he, that or not. I think he's, he's being, making a mockery of this, like, and he's already, you know, kind of ruined this event, and. I, I think this is some of it is just him being pissed about it, right? I think Tyrion would be more okay with it if he was included in the pre-meeting meeting 
You know what I mean? I think now that he's realizing there was a pre-meeting meeting that he wasn't included yeah. in on. He's and it really was just like, Kevin and <laughs> Little Kevin Finger. and Tywin and maybe Littlefinger <laughs> yeah, snuck in exactly. with some news. Yeah, Littlefinger. Exactly. exactly. What's, what, uh, at least Littlefinger's bringing something to the table, which we find out soon. Uh, all right, Tyrion, get off your ass in your, in your nursing bed and, and <laughs> yeah. figure some stuff out for us. And maybe yeah. we'll get you in on this secret meeting. There'll be a spy, exactly. But, all right, so... So Tyrion jumps in on the whole, like, let's break their knees, let's not break their knees thing, yeah. on the, let's go down the middle. Break some knees, maybe the ones that killed my boy Jaslyn Bywater, because I liked him. So break their knees. But the rest of them, yeah, my boy, my other boy, Mormont, he needs people. So send those guys up there. Which is kind of cool, right? Like, it, I think this is, this shows a little bit of Tyrion's maybe non-Lannister side, right? Like, he's kind of, he understands the route, he's... You you said this, I think you said this a long time ago at the very beginning of our experience of our adventure here, right? Like um you said there's two types of people, some that are for the realm and some that are for themselves or their families. For the okay. pursuit of power. Yeah, and like so Tyrion here is kind of showing that he cares about the, the realm both. and other people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. gonna say is like, Tyrion has the very rare uh, attribute that, that you don't find in many Lannisters in particular, but really anybody in this world of the ability to compromise. Like, okay, let's do both. Like, let's meet in the middle here. <laughs> like, yeah. it doesn't have there to be all like one There was like a thousand way. of them, right? Did they say how many there were? I'm not sure they said the number here, but yeah, there was yeah. some people. So. There was enough. All right. It so. was anybody, right? Like, we know what happened up north. Like, they need anybody, right? And the, it, Yeah, and the way Tywin gets away from that is he's, is he's saying, yeah, but what they need them for is to protect the north. We don't want to protect the north. Yeah, like fuck yeah, let the let the wall collapse, baby. Yeah, like, but like he doesn't realize that their problem is his problem. Well, it's weird to me. The one thing he says is maybe in time, Mance Raider could even be an ally. So again, like he knows, right? Like when when Vary says wildlings, Mace just like laughs it off, like ha ha ha, wildlings, you idiot. But well, but he Tywin would, knows they would the know. name of they the king wildling or Mance, right? Like they would. You know, at least you, I would, you would think that they would have a little bit of a crossover, right? Of Mace laughed at Mace laughed it off. I'm Not saying that Mance, I don't think he, Mance and Tywin might have a f- history. Like I don't. I don't no, what did, what Ty, was Mance? M- Mance was just a bastard who was on the wall his whole life. Who blew off off the oh, wall? Okay. I forgot his history. Yeah. So, but again, it just tells me that Tywin might pretend like he doesn't really care or even know about what's going on up there, but he at least knows, right? So. All right, everybody get the fuck out. Lannisters, stay. Yep. Family meeting. Tyrion doesn't like Littlefinger. We mentioned this. It was his idea that Tywin, or that Tyrion became Master of Coin. Cersei likes him? Or, like, at least thinks he's smarter than Tyrion? that's kind of part of why Tyrion hates that job, right? Like, it's kind of like Littlefinger sticking his nose in it, right? I don't know what you mean. Like, I put you here. I, like, it's Tyrion, or Littlefinger, like I said, like, showing him who's boss, right? Like, ha ha. Well, again, I don't Have quite, fun. I don't, I don't quite, and I don't think Tyrion even quite knows what Littlefinger's up to here. But I think Tyrion basically thinks like Littlefinger's up to something. He doesn't, Littlefinger doesn't well, do anything without being up to something. And I don't think Tyrion quite knows what it is because again, it's a promotion. It seems like a good thing. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I see what Kyle is saying. It could be like, all right, Littlefinger knows this job sucks. There's no money. Yeah. You got to find ways to it's like thankless. make money. Like, yeah, ah, okay. go ahead, Tyrion. Yeah. See if you can. Yeah, do and it. he's fucking shoving his face in it. Like now it's your turn, little. Yeah. little man yeah. right like yeah we know they're super yeah. in debt so and yeah, yeah so when it gets to the Cersei part Tyrion's basically telling him don't trust Littlefinger Cersei's like I trust him and Tyrion's like yeah we know you trust him because he sold you Ned Stark he like mm-hmm. he would sell you just as quick like coin is as dangerous as a sword in the right hands and Kevin Kevin's like we have all the gold of Castle Rock and I think we mentioned this earlier too like yeah but that we just we have to go and send people to dig it up Littlefinger mm-hmm. just snaps his fingers and pulls gold out of thin air somehow Makes gold yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like my man has been a magician. <laughs> yeah. Straight up like just cooking the books somehow here. <laughs> yeah. And like I don't I don't know how, how he's doing it either. And and he's going out and making alliances. Now he's gonna go fucking bang Lysa. Yeah. Like this <laughs> guy take her, is, mo- take her money and <laughs> yeah. double it. Yeah, like yeah. he is I look like watch out, this dude is a snake. Yeah. Right? And uh Tywin, I don't know if he trusts him, but at least he's like, well, at least he's bringing me useful information too. Like he's the one that told us of yeah, of the, well, exactly. Uh, Tyrell's trying so to marry Sansa off. Yeah, that's what I was going to agree with you here. Is that like he he's kind of moving above Tyrion almost? Yeah, I mean, I don't think Tywin really gives a fuck about Tyrion until he <laughs> starts doing something that's not complaining. Almost. 
I, I the Sansa deal is is a big thing too, but I think that's also a punishment, right? So like we'll get to that in a second here. Let's keep let's what's the next point? Yeah. So we basically find out that they want to marry Sansa to Will- Sansa to Willis. Yep. And Cersei's mad because Sansa's her prisoner. More so than anything, she's like, "No, she's my prisoner. You <laughs> yeah. can't give her away." Yeah, ain't nobody doing like, that to, to my prisoner. If they ask, I'm not giving it. I'm not giving her up. And they're like, "Yes, you fucking will give her up if they ask, because you're going to be an idiot and ruin our relationships with them." Yeah, they're going to think you don't trust trust him. Cersei's such like a fun character because everything she says like makes sense to a point. It's like playing. It's like if you're playing a computer at chess, but the computer could only look one move into the future. That's like what playing Cersei would be like. Like there's just no foresight of besides like the immediate like no Sansa's yeah. mine like yeah I'm not giving her up. <laughs> Tywin's basically like okay Cersei let's play this game then what happens yeah then the Tyrells are mad that's why we can't do that she's like I don't care if the Tyrells are mad like okay let's play that game then they all leave us okay we, we if you take it three yeah. steps Cersei this is really bad you can't just deny people stuff it's not good for your son <laughs> like it well-being. makes sense why she wants this but like just think about it for a second Cersei. <laughs> It's also a recurring theme throughout this chapter, right? Like now Tywin is literally in charge of everything. Like mm-hmm. he, he even rules the fucking queen. Yeah. Like, well, and again, Tywin's thought about all these chess moves before he's come to the thing. So he's not thinking of them on the fly like this. But yeah, he's he's running the ship now. Tywin's always been daddy to Cersei anyway. <laughs> well, he seems like such a, a fucking dick too, like an awful. Well, yeah, I mean, we'll get into like. Would we have known any other hands of the king who would be like, yeah, break their kneecaps? Most of them probably. I feel like John Aaron, Ned Stark. Yeah, send him up to the wall. Send him, send him to the wall. Rain it in. Tywin's yeah, like, the only bring it in here, down. Robert. Like, like <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're not we're not that kind of king, buddy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> but Tywin had a plan to stall the Tyrells' wedding proposal. Step one: Cersei's wedding. Yep. I'm not getting married. Like, took a rest for us. And this it's is where, like, I think her. you get yeah, the. This is news to me, right? So, like, like I'm, I'm dumb for not thinking of it. Yeah, uh, it's not. It's pretty hard to think. I think of what, I that Cersei should have been married off. Yeah, I don't. I, but I don't but like, so this is me being as naive as Cersei and thinking that she was in charge when actually, yeah. like, I mean, he's completely in charge <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. And I mean, Cersei's like, no, like, I already got married. Like, I'm not remarrying for you. Like, I, already I did, did that, that once. I had a bunch of kids. I'm done. Three's enough. Yeah. There's yeah. three Lannisters here. Oh yeah, well you're gonna you're gonna think about that again and go marry South. <laughs> how about how about the cripple kid? Yeah. Well, they're also they're also saying like this will put to bed the incest rumors. That's one of the reasons yeah. that Kevin yeah. and, Kevin and Tywin want this to go. Oh through. yeah, it's so weird. This is kind of a weird conversation to <laughs> yeah. have. Like, like we got to stop. There's horrible, awful. Stop rumors banging about your you. brother yeah. and go marry this guy. Yeah, at the family yeah. meeting is when they're talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Tyrion's the only one that actually knows that she was banging him and that the kids aren't aren't robs we said we said this before and kyle said that uh he thought that tywin knew and i thought about it some more i still think tywin there's knows. A, there's definitely a scene in the show that now that now that i thought i thought about it after you said that that i don't think is ever in the books so there's ever a hint where mm-hmm. where i think they're basically there's like it comes up that tywin didn't know about it or like we see tywin learn about it and i think that's i think that's a show only thing yeah cersei's like you never wanted to believe it, right? It was right in front of your face and you... Something happens, yeah. And, and basically it comes out. But I get... What, my point is, I don't think that happens at all in the in the books. So I and here, I'm kind of on Kyle's side. Like, I think Tywin and Kevin just, like, know it and they're just trying to bury it in this meeting. I'm not 100% sure. I, I could still they're see... They're not going to be fucking talking about it. They're definitely not going to be talking about it in front of her. Well, they are if it's a way to get... If it's truly a way to get rid of the rumors, if they think... Like, yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, they're going to... They're not going to be agreeing with it and accepting it in front of her. They're going to they're gonna be saying, yeah. like, those awful rumors. They're going to be covering it like this. I'm agree. I'm agree. Yeah, I'm yeah. Saying, I'm not I'm saying a, you're not. Yeah, yeah. I, I could see it going either way. I but, don't know. Yeah, they might know it. They might know it and not want to... Admit it. Exactly. Admit that they know. Exactly. You know, yeah. Exactly. I, I, Why would they? My point is, until you had said that last time, Kyle, I was with Jeff, where I'd always thought that he just didn't know. But I thought about it, and I think I only thought that because of the show. He knows so much. Any he knows so yeah. much, man. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I don't know. I feel like if he, I think knew, it's a toss-up is where I stand. If on he it. knew, he would have done more on his part to separate the two of them. I, I, that makes sense too. Even at like a younger age, like it's hard. It's know. hard to do that once he's king's guard and she's queen. But for sure. But, yeah. but like, if it really was happening at a younger age, yeah. So uh, that's the only thing I'll say about that. But again, we, we're going long. But I think that's what Kyle said because pretty much what happened was Jamie got named the king's guard, and Tywin says, "Cersei, you're coming back to Castle Rock." Because Jamie, what he's thinking about it, he said, like, we made the plans, we executed the plans, and then everything was horrible. I was stuck in King's Landing, and she was back at Castle Rock. 
And I think Ty and Kyle was like, yeah, that's Tywin knows he did that on purpose, which is like what you're saying. Like Tywin would have done this if he knew. And I think my point is he did do it again. Moving back to this chapter. Cersei's like, I'm not a brood mare. <laughs> I'm a queen. I'm not, not a horse. marrying any of these people. Like, oh, it's the dirty old man on the Iron Islands, or who are who? Who else are they? Yeah. Offer? So Tywin goes through the list of options. He Another bas- Martell. <laughs> Tywin starts off by basically saying like, who? It seemed to me I take it as like who his top picks would be. He says Mace Tyrell, Lord Paxter Redwine, and Doran Martell. So two of the people that were just here or Doran. But he says, but they all have young wives who are out, like to outlive them, so they're off the table. But like, why even mention them unless you're yeah, unless you think those are the weird. best ones, right? So it's super yeah. weird. But he's like, yeah, they're gonna live long. Their wives are gonna live longer than them, so that we can't do that. Balon Greyjoy is married, but his wife is old, so he is poten- a she potential option. Die. So Balon Greyjoy and Cersei's like, no, what the fuck, no, no, no. Sir, but they also need like a like a quick wedding, right? Like they are, like it seems like they're like time is kind of of the essence here. If they wanna, if they're trying, it's to... the thing where I think Tywin has the answer. He knows it's Willis. This is all just a dog and pony show to, for per, sure. to pretend for like sure. Cersei has a choice here, I mean, just like the the rest of the whole meeting, right? <laughs> it happens with Tyrion too. And Tyrion's like, I know this. This is for this is just a show for me. So I'll let them have their fun. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, he's he's more or less trying to make her feel better by giving her a choice between Balon, who still has a wife. Like she's not dead. She might be old. But not dead and yeah. Willis. So like, oh great, I get to pick between the old Kraken or the hurt dog. Well, those are the two she says. He gives he gives actual a few other actual ones. And it's funny just because I had this going, Tyrion just like just when I was about to give up prey and some sweet god gives me this. Just like Tyrion just <laughs> loving this this like whole discussion about Cersei. So Tywin also says Ober Martell, who is the guy who crippled Willis in that tournament, like the guy who started the feud. And then he's like, I bet you don't you probably don't mind a younger person. We could go with either Horus or Hobber. So the two red wine twins, two captives we've had the whole time. Basically, Paxter's children. Aren't they ugly? One, Sansa and her friend Jane used to call them horror and slobber. So yeah, not <laughs> not com- not good looking. Uh, Theon not Greyjoy. Calmly. You can use the Game of Thrones. Calmly. <laughs> and, and Quentin Martell, who, again, first time we've heard this person, uh, some other Martell. It's Doran's, I know it's Doran's son. So again, she basically just went down a generation and gave you listen all those people but then he's like to just point the number one po- pick is willis tyrell again we're trying to stop the willis stance of marriage so if you marry cersei to anyone else it doesn't stop the the cersei the sansa Ty- uh the sansa willis marriage so again to me tywin has the answer already it's cersei and willis like anything else doesn't accomplish what we're trying to accomplish <laughs> and he's like you can you can make your choice and when he says willis Tyrion's like oh that would be the cripple <laughs> Tyrion's like just twisting the dagger a little bit that would be the gardener and the, <laughs> the dog breeder yeah. but... he does seem like a cool all dude right. though yeah willis does sound like cool dude. all right she she leaves mad which brings up the next one <laughs> Tyrion's wedding yep sansa all right and the biggest part is they need to do it before Joff's wedding. Well, real quick, because before, they know the one thing before they get to Tyrion's wedding is Tyrion thinks that J- Jamie's a little bit older now and a little bit more uh, do his own thing, like don't listen to anybody, take yeah. no shit type thing. He's he thinks go that kill Willis. <laughs> he says that if Cersei and Willis get married, Willis might come down with a bad case of sword through the bowels. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna kill him. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. Tyrion. Right, so Tyrion's getting married to Sansa. They need to do it before Joff's wedding because. Mace isn't going to do the Sansa thing until Marjorie and Joffrey are married. And there's obviously a lot of reasons for the Lannisters to, to try to marry Sansa, right? Yep. To stop the Tyrells from doing it, uh, to sure up the North, give them a shot it's, of, of getting some land. It's so weird though, right? Like this is still strange because like they're enemies. It's the, it's the way of the world though. I mean, she's, she's bleeding, which is the, the clock that's not at all what i'm talking about though like i'm just saying like they're like sworn enemies and here they are like oh we're just marry each other and now the the war is gonna have to end like (laughs) is that the dress they were making was her wedding dress to Tyrion? (laughs) did i just piece that together (laughs) (laughs) but here's the 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 big uh the big interesting thought the big problem that with that dress is that it's gonna be her own wedding dress to marry somebody that she wants nobody to marry (laughs) there you go i did piece that together there you go yeah (laughs) yeah nelson any other thing i'm just gonna roll on just i will the the whole like while they're talking about Tyrion's marriage uh, there's a point there where Tyrion's like i was married or did you forget that you had my wife you had my marriage annulled and then my wife basically raped by all Mm -hmm. your guards like 
Terry thinks about it. He doesn't say anything. He, he didn't want to broach that subject, but yeah, it's, it's going through his head. It there wouldn't a have bit. went well. He's also sure. thinking about Shay a lot. He's like, I don't want to get married. Uh, Shay's everyone. Shay's I Shay's not going to want me to get married. Exactly. Shay wouldn't like that either. And I'm just like, but she's okay with being my whore. <laughs> yeah, like I don't know if I agree with him on that one. Like she seemed like kind of fine with. That is the last thing she said to him. Yeah, like I'm cool with whatever. Just keep me. Just keep me around. Yeah, and Tyrion's kind of like not happy about it. He's like, why do I have to marry this girl? Uh, and Tywin's like, look, this is a great reward. You're marrying a young, good-looking girl <laughs> yeah. who's a high-born. Yeah. She's got a, a, the biggest good kingdom lands, in the north. Yeah. Like, this is like this. You should be like thanking me. This is like the biggest thing I've ever done for you is giving you this marriage, and you're not for it. And Tyrion's like, what about you? Think about Sansa. Like, she's been being treated cruelly by Joffrey for how long? You're gonna give her to me? And Tywin's like, first off, I don't give a fuck how Sansa feels second off like do you <laughs> intend to be mean to her like she yeah. can be as happy as you make her like just don't be a dick <laughs> it's kind of what Tywin says there yeah but this do you is you plan to mistreat her it's so weird I don't know it's so I have a, such a hard time relating with this stuff he's like she's the key to the north we need her and he basically this is when it gets a little weird he's like Cersei has told me she's flowered. <sighs> just got to bang her once. You only need to bang her <laughs> once for the first feet, like basically to prove that the marriage happens. Until she's older. Yeah, then you can wait. <laughs> that was weird. Yeah, I guess that, again, I don't know how much of this is based off like real history. I don't know. I have no clue. Like, is it was consummation like a thing that you I'm had sure. to do for the I'm marriage sure to be big, real? Big, big thing. I would think so. There's a thing in the other book series I read. A broken empire where basically that happens a guy has to like he consummates the marriage and he sticks the bloody bed sheet out the window and everybody well, there's gotta be a reason it's i didn't there's read a that. word for it right yeah i didn't read that part Nelson. spoiler well you stopped reading yeah uh, well i stopped i stopped needing to paint my house so i've got off the audiobook train yeah uh um, so the next thing i have is the story of him trying to wed jamie to lisa and basically like look i tried to marry you to anybody just real, real quick before they before they do that, they basically go down how nobody wants Tyrion. They basically do this dog and pony show that Tyrion recognizes. He, they're like, well, if it's not you, it's going to be a Lannister. And they're like, what about these Lannisters or this Lannister? Like, yeah, hey, how right. about your two twins, Martin or Willem or Tion? Oh, these two are these two are in prison, and this one had <laughs> yeah. an injured shoulder, and he can't get exactly. his pee up. Yeah, and Tyrion starts to think about it. He's like. Good looking Sansa who likes songs and tall people and handsome people. He's like, fuck, that's not <laughs> not me. But yeah, then Tywin kind of says, like, this you should be good. Like, I've tried to get you married before, like to your point. And it starts with the first one was when Jamie got and this is we picks off kind of with Jamie's history. Jamie, we heard in his history, was probably gonna be supposed to be married to Lysa, but then he got named to the Kingsguard. So where that picks up was Tywin goes back to Hoster and he's like, Hey, you can't have that son. How about my other son? I have another one. And Hoster's like, yeah, I want a whole one, though. I want a whole man for my <laughs> daughter. It was kind of fucked up. Definitely. And Tyrion thinks, like, wow, that's fucked up. Like, I wasn't good enough, but John Aaron was. And John Aaron was literally old, old enough to be her granddad. And he's like, whatever. I'll count myself lucky because she's crazy now. And then Tywin keeps going. He's like, I tried to offer you to Dorne, basically to, like, probably to the Martells, but they took it as an insult. He got the same response from Bronze on Royce, from Leighton Hightower. And he even went so low as to suggest that Tyrion marry the the girl that Robert fucked in Stannis' marriage bed. Basically, the mother of Edric Storm. Yeah. But even she, even her dad, was like, nah, I'd rather give him give her to just like a random knight in my household. Yeah. And I don't, <laughs> I don't know if it's here either. And he's like, all right, like if we don't want to marry Sansa, like maybe Lawless will marry you. Yeah. Yeah, it's right here. For him, yeah. Yeah, he says that's the only offer he's actually had for Ty- material he's like yeah it's lollies the the halfwit who was raped a half a hundred times during the during the riot of king's landing and is now pregnant and is now pregnant, and is pregnant. exactly yeah so. and Tyrion's like i'd rather cut off and feed it to the goats which is Tyrion going to his mountain clan yeah so, exactly yeah. a little throwback <laughs> there. yeah uh so the next part i have is that tywin believes we have some time because he doesn't think the Greyjoys can actually hold the north especially when it becomes winter well, I think T- Tywin also hits Tyrion with some tough love real quick. He's like, what's wrong with Sansa? Like, wake up. This is good. And Tyrion's like, I want someone who wants me. And Tyrion, Tywin's like, you fuck whores. Yeah, they don't fuck want you. Because yeah. you pay them, yeah. not because they want you. you <laughs> Tyrion's yeah. like, well, they, they like want me. Money. <laughs> That's what he thinks, <laughs> yeah. right? <laughs> so, yeah, then we get into your stuff. All right, so he, he has time to actually, like, act like a husband to Sansa, I guess, because... They're really not going to try to take over the North until after the Greyjoys abandon it come winter. 
Yeah, so the long term plan, right? Tywin has like a, a we, somewhat vision of the yeah, long term. Yeah, why not plan, marry right? me to, to, to Greyjoy's daughter, who we know Greyjoy's daughter, right? Like, that's, yeah. I don't think she would marry Tyrion, yeah. but. Um, <laughs> because she's the one who is would inherit the North, right? Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, they hold the North right now. And, and, uh, why not her? And he's like, well, yeah, he's exactly, he's, he can't. He cares more about plunder. There's nothing up there. Like, there's nothing for him. They're not going to last the winter yeah. up there. They're going like, to go Life running. is going to be way too hard for him. Which, to be fair, is like, it's interesting because the way that they see the, like, the way that Tywin and Tyrion and them see the Greyjoys is as, like, a united Greyjoy army. When the way the Greyjoys see themselves is, we're attacking the coast, and dumb renegade Theon went to the middle of the north and took Winterfell. But, like, you know what I mean? Like, if... Yeah. If, <laughs> If he hadn't have done that, does Tywin, like, it doesn't seem like they're quite as trying to conquest the entire north. They're kind of just, like, trying to take a few castles on the coast. It's kind of what it seems like to me. You know what I mean? Theon's the one who went over and well, above. Well, they weren't on the coast, so they were getting Mo Kalen and... Like, Mo Kalen the next, so you couldn't get the retreat. And then the Deepwood, river. the other castle they got Deepwood was Deepwood Mott, Mott yeah. which is kind of on the coast. Yeah, so... Again, yeah. I think a little bit of the a little bit of what Tywin's saying here, where like all he cares about plunder this is never going to last, is partially because he's thinking like the way Theon's thinking about it, but it's not quite the way Balon's thinking about it. But basically, what he's saying is it's not going to last. The Northmen, they're gonna. The North is harsh. Like the winter's harsh, harsh in the North, and the winter's coming. It's almost autumn. The Northmen, I guess, need to like stock up food or whatever, and these guys probably aren't doing that. So the the, the small folk are not going to be happy with them come spring. And when you show up with Ned Stark's grandson, everyone in the North is going to help you put that guy on Winterfell's throne. Or but seat. wait, Dad. What if Rob the Young Wolf has a baby? Yeah, he's supposed to marry a Frey, and they're pretty fertile. Mm, he's not marrying a Frey. <laughs> yeah, the news comes out. This is the first that news gets out. And Varys didn't tell us, and Littlefinger didn't tell us. So I don't, I don't know. Well, Littlefinger's here, though, isn't he? Yeah, we don't know. They could have told Tywin. We don't know if one of them told Tywin. True. But no, l- nobody's in this room right now except for Lannisters. And Cersei left. So I, now it's just I Tywin. Thought, I Kevin. thought Littlefinger stayed. No, he left. Okay. Everyone left. Yeah, so just right now it's just Tywin, Kevin, Tyrion. Okay. Because Cersei left too. So yeah, Rob has married Jean Westerlane, one of our guys, right? Because this is from a Lannister perspective. This is one of our lesser lords, one of his daughters. And Kevin's like, yeah, he even, but basically he offered her to one of my ki- children once. But I had to say no because they were too lowborn. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, this is pretty much what Kat was even saying. Like, this is not, like, they're not on your level. Yeah, so I, I think Tyrion kind of describes it, though. He kind of, like, compares it to a character we know. He says that, it's, it, and it's crazy because Tyrion later says, like, this to me, I don't, I don't consider this lowborn. She says that the person, so uh, Jane's mom is a, was a Spicer, Sabelle Spicer. Mm-hmm. Her grandfather, so Jean's great-grandfather was like a Davos level person. Who, yep, the Onion Knight. Who maybe got, became a lord, right? He might have been the first one to become a yeah, lord. Yeah, so or I mean, he's, but I mean, he's he's a highborn essentially then, but he's a low highborn, I guess. A lesser lord. He, he actually might not even have been a lord. He might have just been like a really like a really rich knight, maybe even, right? Or maybe even not a knight, just like a really rich merchant. He just did really. He had a really good spicing business. Yep. But the grandma, <laughs> Jean. So Sabelle's grandma, Jean's great grandma, is this like weird. Prophecy, Mag- witch, magi, witch yeah. magi lady who, Mary Mazdor, the, the, yeah, the Spicer grandpa brought back yeah. from like from like one of his like trading voyages, and she's like a known witch, witch of the she woods cured type everybody, person yeah. now. Yeah, like doing yeah potions and stuff in the woods. We don't like that shit. <laughs> Love potions and and so I think it's funny because Tyrion's like having married a whore. I couldn't share my uncle's horror at marrying the great granddaughter of a sp- of a guy who sold cloves yeah <laughs> like, <is laughs> like who really might have talk shit like, right yeah, like, yeah. Who cares? yeah um but yeah they, they say that yeah the next part i have is just tearing kind of being surprised that tywin's not like overly angry about the westerlings leaving them well they do they kind of clear clarify something that i feel i feel like maybe we talked about in the other chapters uh with the, the other rob chapter here where basically says like oh I, Tyrion says, I can't believe Rob would do this. I thought he had more sense. And Tywin says, he's 16. At that age, sense means little compared to lust, love, and honor. And Tyrion says, he forswore himself, shamed an ally, betrayed a solemn promise. Where is the honor in that? And Sir Kevin answered, he chose the girl's honor over his own. Once he had deflowered her, he had no other course. Ned. They they know a lot of details about 
uh, her being the flower. <laughs> this is weird, yeah. Did they, <laughs> did they wave the sheet out of the window? Well, so this is why my prediction is going to be that the Westerlings are more into the Lannisters still than Ooh. they're putting on to, to Rob here. I bet some of that prediction comes from this little last bit, right? Which yeah. is what Jeff was alluding to earlier, that Tywin is known to be very upset when people are disloyal and he does not seem very upset here. Yeah, like this is something he might have put them up to. Neither of you guys have read a quote yet. Read that little quote, Kyle. He had extinguished the proud reigns of Castamir. He had extinguished the proud reigns of Castamir and the ancient Tarbex of Tarbeck Hall, root and branch, when he was still half a boy. The singers had even made a rather gloomy song of it. Some years later, when Lord Farman of Faircastle grew truculent, Lord Tywin sent an envoy bearing a lute instead of a letter. But once he'd heard the reins of Castamere echoing through his hall, Lord Farman gave no further trouble. And if the song were not enough, the shattered castles of the reins and Tarbeck still stood as mute testimony to the fate that awaited those who chose to scorn the power of Casterly Rock. The crag is not so far from Tarbeck Hall and Castamere, Tyrion pointed out. You'd thought the Westerlings might have ridden past and seen the lesson there. Yep. So mayhaps they have is what Tywin says. He's like, I think they're still in line is pretty much what he's saying. So this is the first we've heard of this, right? I mean, we kind of knew that the, they were pissed. It seemed like, right? Like some of them didn't seem like they were that loyal. No, uh, no, I'm talking about Tywin's the history, history of the history of the Rant of Castamere's. Oh yeah. Yeah. The first we've heard that those two things. Yeah. I think where he's, yeah. So there was these two house and again, we don't get too much, but I'll give you a little bit more just to clarify. Cause I think there's enough context clues here. Basically, there was two lesser houses. The Reigns and Tarbex. The Reigns and Tarbex. And Tywin's dad was the lord. He was kind of a soft lord. He let people push him over. He let people borrow money, and he didn't like keep them. He was a nice guy. He up on their payments didn't and stuff like that. put interest on it. And Tywin thought that these two lords were getting a little too comfortable. So, again, we don't know what happens. We'll find out more about this later on. Basically, he just completely obliterated every single person. These houses, you'll, there are no people. We won't see any Reigns or any Tarbex at all in the books because they don't exist anymore. Tywin took them Dunzo. all gone. <laughs> and even their castles are, like they say here, smashed, gone. Yeah. Exactly. Like they are, and, and I think it kind of goes back to the, he left the castles there on purpose. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's like putting the heads on the spikes and leaving them there. Yeah, it's like the Hunger Games leaving District 13 to like the, the ruins. These are the guys with broken kneecaps that are begging in the streets that remind all the yeah. other soldiers in the gold cloaks. Yeah, this like, is what remember. happens when you desert yeah. while Tywin's in charge. Don't desert Tywin Lannister. Yeah. Or you're going to be dead or broken. Yeah, so basically the, the last part of the chapter is Tywin says uh, he knows that they know about He's like, trust me, they know about the reigns of Castamere. And you will marry Sansa. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. So, long All chapter. Right. Went long. We thought it'd go long. Again, I like it. Kyle, any, uh, any, do you like it a little more after, after we've gone through it a little, little bit? I mean, I liked it to begin with. I didn't mean to say that, I guess. It was just kind of one of the. I get what you were saying. You're saying there's a lot of names. Like, and again, if you're, yeah. if you're not reading it like a maniac like me where you're taking well, notes. Well, and not even that. The just stuff. the, the sub subplots going on in the background and not knowing like i think we probably passed over some some things that i could have probably maybe made guesses on or things like that but it, it's they're, they're the whole chapter is like that and that's it's kind of the, the whole chapter is that hard. and i'm like and the whole time i'm reading it i'm trying to think of like a, like i have this other obligation where i have to talk about this and i'm like oh what's this uh -huh. mean what's that mean <laughs> you know so like uh -huh. it's like kind of this 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 hard thing and like i said it makes me feel dumb because i'm like this exercise and i'm like I honestly don't know what he's referencing here. I I don't re I'm not really yeah. sure like you know the deeper plot. I that's don't here. think you would have been able to guess Cersei's like you could have read it slower and taken notes and like there's nothing pointing to Cersei getting remarried other than that she was still young enough yeah. to remarry. Um Sansa the dress like it's funny cuz that was like two chapters ago and like obviously we knew um yeah. But there's things but, that, like, in I see that you're talking about, like, that we could have asked you, like, hey, how do you have a prediction on this? And there was a few things that I wanted to, but it's weird, but, like, in a chapter this long, when I'm not asking you about predictions for most things, if all of a sudden I ask you for a prediction, it's, like, I feel like it's almost leading. It is, but, I mean, isn't that kind of the nature of this, though? So, like, I think you can't avoid that completely. I, I don't know. I'm not saying I'm not saying just to ask it every time. Like, there's one thing I want to ask you, but I feel like the question would be... Yeah, and I'm leading. not saying, like, go over the top with it, but at the same time... Text like, it to me, Nelson. All right, I'll, I'll I'll text it to Jeff real quick. No, I don't think we. I don't think. I think it's too leading. No, no, that's too leading. It's too. It's too much. Okay, <laughs> okay. 
Uh, like I don't know what Kyle could even predict. Like I, I mean, I tried weddings. to make He's... at least one there, right, with the the Rob thing. Yeah, so. the West. Yeah, yeah. I think that's. And I mean, it sounds like it sounds like Littlefinger's going to win again because he somehow pulls everything out of his ass and wins. I just hate because it's so interesting to see Littlefinger and then he just like in for a council chamber and fucks off, right? Like Bam, he's gone. gone. He's going to the veil. We I don't have go, any POVs in the veil. Miles like, away. <laughs> yeah, like he did this last book. Too. Yeah, he went somewhere we had no no way of knowing. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah. I think we've been going long enough. We'll call this here. We'll jump into the spoiler section and we'll see Kyle in the next one for Catlin 3. Bye, Kyle. Later, nerds. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Bye, Kyle! Bye, Kyle. See you on the next one. Sleep. Jeff and I are super excited getting into the spoiler section on this awesome chapter. Jeff, what a, it is. <laughs> hey, I, I don't want to. We've been going long. It's late. Uh, it is, it late. is a really a good chapter. Late. It is a really good chapter. We've been going sure. long. I'm gonna drink some whiskey. We got, we got to get Jeff fired up. Hopefully, some of the stuff that I bring up will get some get some gears turning. We'll get some stuff going. All right. Let me start with a light one. I'll start with a light one, and it's <laughs> super light. And I, I purposely skipped over it in my notes. And if Nelson keeps in the non-spoiler, like he wanted to talk about Littlefinger, Dantos, this Samson is a good point. Yeah, I, I think mixed up. And I hold on, I hold, thought, on hold on, hold on. So explain, explain what you're saying. So some of this m- uh, might get cut from the the non-spoiler because we did ramble at the end a little bit. Yeah. But basically, I was proposing asking Kyle. A question sometimes it's hard to tell like what i'm allowed to ask kyle and not without being leading and what i kind of wanted to ask while we were going but again i didn't know how to sl- sneak it in a because i wanted to keep us rolling but b i didn't know how to sneak it in without being like oh hey kyle isn't it weird that little finger knew about this and not varies especially because yeah. like butter bumps was singing when this was being discussed but then again i think like it, i think kyle's been paying attention and it would be too easy for him to be like okay who knows dantos little finger is the dantos guy but again yeah, i think there have been hints of that before so I don't know if it's bad. No. It's kind of the dress thing, right? Like, no is it bad if he learns it? Because he no. thought about it. He just took a little nudge. What do you mean? He went back. To, I mean, it's not that hard. She got a dress. Like, she's getting married. I, Figuring out theories in Game of Thrones is like gravity. All it takes is a little, little push. push. For sure. And but, I just wanted to, sometimes you just got to give Kyle that little push. Like, hey, isn't that dress a weird thing to think about now? Or like, isn't it weird to think about how a little finger knew this? He would never, but that would also change his whole experience. Like you're now taking away, sure, exactly, and that's you're why taking I, away that holy fuck moment, which I think is a crime. I agree. That's why I feel like I don't say that. I try and hold back and not say those things. Yeah. So back on track. Another thing I want to ask you real quick. Sorry, just just clearing up. I, I like I do like when we talk about the stuff from the a non spoiler before we get into the, spo- the spoilers, the actual spoilers. Uh, the thing about Tywin not knowing Cersei or Jaime. I honestly don't think that's in the books because mm. – uh, and I kind of li- was lying when I said like, oh, how would we ever learn that because we don't have those POVs. We do get Cersei POVs, but we don't get yeah. Cersei POVs until after Tywin's dead. Right. So I, I do honestly believe that that's impossible and I don't think we ever get a, a scene like that in the books. Yeah, I think that was fine to say. Like even – like we could even say the show was different. Like in the show, it was very clearly Tywin didn't know. Like he gets super angry. Yeah, when she brings it up, for sure. Yeah, and she's like laughing at him, like, "Ha, huh, you really are an idiot. Like, yeah. you, you really are blind." That'd be interesting. I, I kind of want to look that up in the fandom, or I guess just like fan. Yeah. If you're listening, if you're listening this far into the podcast, let us know in the comments or in the Discord. Do you think if Tywin knew? I could honestly, I see both sides of the coin. I'm saying like he could be so blind with pride that like he would never ever think that his kids would do it. So like it doesn't even cross his mind. And then the, I could also see him just turning a blind eye because again his reputation like he wouldn't and like he's gonna try to do it like secretly under the wraps but cersei went and screwed yeah. up the plans yeah but all right so now into actual spoilers what, what you got all right so the first one and i skipped over it in my notes i wanted to see if kyle was gonna bring it up and he didn't uh but it was and it was maybe because there was so much to talk about that he like didn't even give a fuck like he was just kind of along for the ride peter Littlefinger, i don't know why i called him peter won't be at the wedding he won't be at the wedding. Exactly. I was gonna say that there was a thing where, where, uh, just because he has a funny quote when when May says, "Oh, you'll miss the wedding," or maybe Paxter, and he says, "Brides and tides wait for no man." I think that's yeah. a cool quote. But yeah, he's gone. But the thing is, 
he's not really gone. Exactly. Get it. I think you said it, we're, you're going to start with not a big one. I think that's the biggest one is that like what's actually going on with Littlefinger here. He says he's going to see Lysa. He's literally just going to go chill offshore for a couple of weeks. Wait till all this wedding nonsense happens. He, who knows? He might. He probably is like pulling a varies. And he probably just throws on a fake mustache and he's walk. He's probably like in the crowd. You would you would think that Varys would know. Yeah. You're right. He has his pretty put thumb on it. But yeah, like the but whole he's, he's little not of it. going to the veil yet. Yeah. Yes. So does he actually do anything? Is he just like meeting with Dantos maybe on the rocks, you know, and just getting more information, whatever it might be. But yep. So that's really the, the one I had. I had one other point, which Kyle, which like once re- you read this chapter, like I feel like it is a lot clearer that the Westerlings could be on the Lannister side right now. Like we I, say I that, feel like but that's, I feel like I, I won't put words in your mouth, but I'm assuming you too. I never once thought that the Westerlings and, and the Lannisters were working together until I was maybe afterwards when I started looking up theories and stuff after I finished yeah. them all. This is one of the things I definitely would have read over. I don't really remember the details of the I, like I don't remember what more I'm going to see from Jane and the Westerling clan till the Red Wedding and definitely I don't remember after the Red Wedding. Yeah. So it's hard for me to say like whether or not I I do know. It's a little suspect that none of them are there. So so the one thing that I would say is what about the squire? What about the the kid squire? So so okay, yeah. I guess let me catch you up on things you things you might not remember. The Westerlings definitely don't seem to know about the Red Wedding, right? So if they're in if they're in working with the Lannisters, the Lannisters don't tell them about the Red Wedding, which makes sense, right? Fuck them. Like who like who cares? Yeah, we can kill them off and fill their house with somebody else. <laughs> Literally, who gives a fuck if they die or not? Um, they're just like we're just they're just getting used. Uh, I. So my point is, I guess, if they're being used, what are they being used for? And what I think Tywin is thinking is the following. We have Sansa. She's mm-hmm. useless because Rob could have heirs. Right. How do we make her useful? Prevent Rob from having heirs. How can I possibly do that? If I can get him in bed with one of my somebody that is in my pocket, and I have whoever that person is in my pocket drinking tansy tea, mm-hmm. Rob will never ha- have heirs. Okay. So I think I that's what I think that's what that can be the only thing to me that's that's happening, right? Is he's basically saying, get marry Rob off, make sure your daughter does not get pregnant. And he's probably saying this. I think he's saying this to Sabelle based on things I know later on. Yeah. Jamie, Jamie, I think talks to Sabelle and it comes up with it. Yeah, I mean, there's one other thing that I could say. Because what else are they working together on? Uh, it's kind of like the Spider. It's funny because me and you are watching Spider Man this weekend, right? It's kind of like he can't. <laughs> If you treat Jane Westerling as Mary Jane, like there's a, she's now in danger to Rob, right? So sure. like they could kind of, I don't know, kill her type of thing. Like, so that's, I mean, okay, but how know. does that have to do with them being like working? To, like, you know what I mean? Like that doesn't really have to do with them working together. That's, Rob just has an extra weakness now. I guess you could take it like if, you're, yeah. if you want to go down uh, that I, route, you could you could be like. That's, hey. I guess that's what I was saying. Like Rob has a weakness, like to to this girl because they they talked about his honor. Like he's gonna honor her. Like so, if they could steal her away and then like hold her hold her captive, like maybe he'll like. That's a good idea. Like if you want to again, and maybe that's what they were planning. But then so now think about it this way: think you're Tywin, and you're like, okay, they have Jamie. How do I get Jamie back? I need to have mm-hmm. control of someone who's really important to Rob. How do yeah. I get that? Just plant one, right? Make one. So have one of my people go in, become really important to Rob, and then basically be like, hey, Rob, I'm going to go on a vacation really quick. I'll be back in a few weeks. And yeah. then just have them come to King's Landing and then pretend yeah. they got captured and be like, okay, we'll trade you your oh, wife no. for Jamie. Yeah. Then bang, we just got to free Jamie. You know what I mean? You got to free Jamie. And then, That's a super then, detailed plan. <laughs> again, I, I don't think so. But it's a lot of moving parts. I would, I would tend to agree with your point over Marry him, that one stay but, celibate or stay uh stay barren. infertile yeah exactly that that's where my head is currently at with them and i think again i think we'll get more info when jamie does talk to sabel later on i don't even know if they really care i mean i guess they do but like if they're gonna just inform on rob too like they obviously get to set up the red wedding where if as long as they get info on rob so the squ- the squire is presumed dead at the red wedding. I think he gets okay. like shot by an arrow and so, jumps into the see, river or something your point, like that. Like, 
like the Westerlings like lose people at the red wedding, which means they don't yeah. know about it or they wouldn't send their people there. Right. And to your point earlier, does Tywin really give a fuck if every Westerling dies? Who cares? No. The the whole point is killing Rob. So yeah. if they're gonna if they're gonna give info on Rob, which helps make the plan of the Red Wedding, that might have been enough. That's a good point. You you just like the, getting the Westerling close to Rob could just be now we have an inside man and no more than that. It could just be like okay yeah. now we have somebody who's given us information. And I don't even know if it's the whole Westerling clan. Like I might I might be on the belief that like. Jane is in love with Rob and dad is like, we're blowing it. I need to reach out to Tywin. So let's pull the Rob thread a little bit. Roose Bolton sent men to Duskendale from Heron okay. Hall, from Heron Hall area, from Castle Derry, right? Like around, around the end of the crossroads. Right. He sent men to Duskendale. The, why? There's no reason to go here. Roos sent this. We, we I, and I read the my notes from the Arya mm-hmm. chapter. Roos sends men down here, and then what Tywin does is he sends his men from King's Landing to Duskendale, and he sends the mountain back to Harrenhal. And then what happens is most of the Northmen get fucked here, and the rest who don't are gonna run right back into and get fucked up by the mountain. Eventually, Roos is gonna leave to go up to the twins. Yeah. And when he leaves Harrenhal, basically he's gonna go just fast enough that the mountain can fuck up most of the people he's riding with. Like like his rear guard, just gets fucked up by the mountain. Why would is is Roos doing that just so he can kill the North loyalists and like? There's a part here where Tywin says, "Why would we join Balon Greyjoy? Why would we give Balon Greyjoy?" No, for sure. This is another point I had is like, there's someone better. That person is Roos Bolton. They're it's already not... working together. Roos Bolton sent these people here and told Tywin, yeah. "Hey, I'm I'm serving you up a bunch of Northmen on a platter. Go kill them all." Yeah. So. So my question here is, I'm I'm completely with you. That person is Roose Bolin. He's he's the better guy. Yep. Is he sending these people to slaughter and letting them out and pick off the other people because he knows that they'll never back him with because he's not the Stark? Like, yeah, for sure. At some point, he's going to take over the North, and he needs people, right? So, well, like, yeah, but yeah, but when he knows that when he's over the North, it's going to come out that he did so by but like he was the betrayer. Like he knows right. it's going to come out. So I think you're right. The less like in all these people that are following him right now are men who are very loyal to Rob. They've been fighting right. for a year for Rob. They're still fighting for Rob. <laughs> right. So he's like, we need to kill yeah. all these people because when I betray Rob, these these men are not going to be happy with me. And really, we only really hear of Karstark joining him. Yeah, his long term plan. I don't know really how that goes, but you're right. Karstark probably is one of them because they're like they by then they're, they're like, like fuck, fuck Rob, Rob right now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Because he kills Lord Karstark. Well, the very next line of the next cap chapter is they carry the corpses in upon their shoulders and laid them beneath the dais. So this is when Karstark kills the two. The two twin boys. Yeah. The cousins. And and basically this is the next. The two, the last two cap chapters, I think, are the, the downfall of Rob. Rob marries Jane mm-hmm. Westling. Rob kills Karstark. Right. Yeah. Like. And again, you make he's he he's being Ned in both of them, which is the thing. Like he's marrying yeah, the person he that he dishonored. He, he's being honorable, and he's swinging he's the sword, passing the sentence. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So he's being Ned is what kills is what ends up killing Rob completely in the long run, which sucks because we all love Ned. Ned's the right guy. It's it almost feels like the whole lesson of the the Game of Thrones books is the good guy do the right thing. You'll get yeah. fucked over. <laughs> Does Rob kill him in the show? Yeah. Why don't I remember that scene? It's raining and he's like, kill me and be cursed. Does it take him two swings too? No, uh, I don't. I don't think that's, so. I think that, he, uh, Theon takes like three or four to kill Theon him. Theon takes a couple. Yeah. It's very similar to the Theon scene. It's raining in both of them. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't. Right before he kills him, he's like, they're in the, they're in River Run and Car Stark's like, uh, there's one point where he's like, yes, the the king means to give me a scolding before he sets me yeah, free. Yeah, yeah, I, I do recall that. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember him actually chopping his head. I'm going to have to watch it silently. It's a good one. He like clenches his, he's like clenching his fists and his gloves are, yeah, it's a good one. Um, So Jane West, Jane Westerling's great grandmother was, is like some weird magi from the Yeah, East. that's, that's definitely interesting. I didn't. Uh, is this the woman in the woods? This is Maggie the Frog, the woman who gives Cersei all her Cersei prophecies. 
get the fuck out of here. I mean, that makes sense. It's her. Uh... So let's wrap this back around because there's an, one of the other like weird things that I saw in this chapter was one of those prophecies. Maggie the Frog. Is, You'll have three, three crowns, three shrouds, gold. Bunch of stuff. We're not going to linger too much on it now. Not that one, though. I want to touch on one of them. So not that one. There's a few things she talks about. You will marry the king. Not that one. I don't remember. That's all I got. How does she die? People call this the Valencar prophecy. Uh, the king's king's the brother kills her. When we first hear the prophecy, she says the Valencar will strangle you or something like that, and we don't know what Valencar means. And then, like a book and a half later, we hear we find out that Valencar means little brother. And people then think, oh, does that mean Tyrion because he's the or younger brother, or Jamie could it be Jamie? But people also think it could be like, oh, does it mean like the Hound or literally any second, any any little brother? <laughs> exactly. So it's one of those things where prophecies. Uh, <laughs> what's he say? George has a bunch of stuff. One is like a prophecy is a whore that bites your dick off or something like that. Oh gosh. <laughs> or like a hilt without a sword. There's no safe way to grasp it. But there's there's a, a whore without a dick <laughs> off that'll bite your dick off or something like that. I think it's a better one. But in this chapter, there's a quote that I actually caught before I, before they talked about the Jane Westerling thing. My lords, grant me the men, and I will sort out Lysa Aaron. He could think of nothing he would enjoy more, except perhaps strangling Cersei. Dun 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 dun. So when Tyrion's basically saying like, "Let me go take care of Lysa," there's nothing I could, I would enjoy more except strangling Cersei. Tyrion Valencar huh. strangling Cersei. Then we hear of Maggie the Frog for the first time ever. It's too bad she's going to fall in the burning of King's Landing and the castle's just going to fall on her while she holds Jamie's hand. <laughs> no. It's not like the show. Sometimes I literally... I know this can't be how it is, but sometimes when you get chapters like this, I feel like George, like... Took a vacation, right? Like he was writing Storm of Swords. Like it's too too and, obvious right now? No, no, no. In between like Sam... He just went off and he took a vacation or he like had to go on like a publishing and do a bunch of interviews. And while he was gone, he wasn't writing, but he had like a notepad where he was just writing down ideas. And he's mm. like, oh, Maggie the Frog. Like, oh, Littlefinger uh, steal yeah. Sansa for the wedding. Like, again, some of this was already planned, but like there's just so much stuff in this chapter that I, like for the fir- like the first time we ever hear of Quentin. Like he's like, oh, Doran's yeah. going to have a whole secret plan with Quentin. Like, and then then he comes back from vacation and then the next chapter is just loaded with like a bunch of first time mentions of shit. And is Quentin this the one is that one gets burned? Yeah. Quentin gets burned, right? Yeah. yeah, he just we got literally like eight chapters of him crossing all of Essos and then he just burns. It's like, what was the point of this uh, yeah. guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't know if it was I, I couldn't remember if Fagon was the one getting burned or if it was Quentin. Quentin. But it was yeah. Quentin. Uh, so. The other thing I just wanted to bring up, Dornish are coming. Uh, mm-hmm. Again, like we don't... The Red Viper is the goat. We've only heard Oberyn's name once. This is the second time ever in the books we've heard Oberyn's name. So again, it's one of those things where like George, George mm-hmm. is like, I feel like, again, he was on vacation. He's like, oh, what if this guy comes? He's like, he, he shows up instead of Doran. Should he we fights, get him into King's Landing? <laughs> like, it's all in the same chapter. All this stuff's come, like introduced for the first time. And the last thing was that I wanted to bring up Mace Tyrell, and I talked about it a little bit in the non-spoiler, is basically like, oh, I want the Florence land. Fuck the Florence. The Florence mm-hmm. are dickheads. They're my people, and they just did not go with me. The next Davos, so last Davos we saw, Davos, it ended with, it's you're getting, getting thrown in a cell. Do you remember where the next Davos picks up off? Picks up at? Is he reading to the daughter? No, he's in the cell, and the hand of the king gets thrown in the cell. Alistair Florence. Mm. No, I don't recall. And... Davos like, what'd you do? And he's like, it's horrible. Like, I ran the numbers. We have nobody. We're fucked. So, and I also heard they gave away all my land. So I sent a letter basically saying like, hey, we give up. Just let oh, let God. Stannis be Lord of Storm's End and Dragonstone and let me be Lord of my place again. And we'll do whatever you say. And Stannis yeah. found out that he sent that letter and he's like, in the dungeons. Yeah, lock him up. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't just kill him. <laughs> it seems like a nothing burger in this chapter. And again, I'm sure I read it over it the first time that like, oh, we're taking away the Florent lands. And like they kind of focus on it a yeah, little bit more. I mean, than I don't th- remember. I don't remember that because Stannis doesn't act like other than throwing him in jail. Like, <laughs> yeah. He's like, fuck that. Like, I'm still king. <laughs> yeah, he's, that's the only thing Stannis cares about. It's like, I don't care about anything that's going on by army or anything. I'm still king, though. If you try to say I'm not king, you're <sighs> in jail. You're you're yeah, you're fucked. <laughs> Not really, because I don't have any power. <laughs> yeah. I burn you. Uh, yeah, that was the last thing I had, though. Uh, yeah, I, I really like this chapter. A lot of them. There's a there's a chapter like this in Feast of Crows that Cersei. I think it's just a, it's a Cersei chapter, and it's just all 
one council meeting, but it's so much better. I think that was a little bit better because you don't have Tyrion giving you all the answers. You have mm-hmm. dumbass Cersei seeing one step deep, and then you yeah, can, yeah. and you like that's the spoiler section on that one's going to be ridiculous because on that one you you're the one that have to get, to go all the steps. You deep. have to to put two and two together. <laughs> yeah, Cersei's not putting any pieces of the puzzle together. So, um, yeah, no, I I do think it was a good chapter. I think we are out of recap stage now. I hope. But yeah, now we're just talking way too long on an episode that's right. already been too long. So wrap it up. We'll see you guys on the next one. If you listen this long, definitely give us a like. Definitely give us a comment. <sighs> if you we'll made see, it this far. We'll see you guys on the next one. Catlin 3. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.